What up, internets? Welcome to the greatest podcast since Al Gore invented the internet. That is The War Room. This is episode 217. Won't keep you long. I just want to say this. This whole episode is pretty much about our preview to the NFL season. You can listen to hear us make all kinds of outrageous picks before the season began. Um, you know, and see just how wrong we were or right we were considering the first week has passed. But we talk about the entire season, give our predictions and whatnot. So, you know, sit back, enjoy episode 217 of The War Room. Easy. Blog Talk Radio. Better get that money right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The War Room. You got Dev, Jill, Jimmy, PJ, and B. Austin, the hot block commander. Give it to you. How you want it in the one or two hour show to keep the brain running with the premise to talk sports on a national level. Both with them topics, sort of like the rebels. When it's game time, they like the bad five door on prime time. Sports conglomerates, speak their minds a little bit. From sports medicine to sports veterans and race. The 4 for 26, so the war ain't going. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five family guys, the first of five and educated. Once again, live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on the WRS Podcast Network. I'm Devin McMillan. I'm here with my brother Jimmy the Blueprint Williams, and we're joined by Frank Santos of the Incomparable Sports Kings. That's sports-kings.com. Go check it out. The NFL season is here, and 98.3% of this episode will be all about football. We'll give you our picks for the season, awards, predictions, analysis, and more. So join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. Or join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. Uh, you, you guys know we want to hear from you about the season, so make sure you get in that chat room so we can bust it up. You can also call us directly when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number is 323-410-0012. Before we get started... We got to remind you guys to check out the great shows on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. Get there from our main site, warroomsports.com, or you can get there directly at wrspn.com. You'll find shows such as our show, for one, The War Room, uh, our brothers over at the Broad Street Line, which is Philly sports as well as national sports with hosts Roy and Chris, uh, the Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Podcast for all you hip hop heads out there, the Gaffer and Hooligan Soccer Podcast. An MLS CONCACAF edition, and there's a European soccer uh, edition. So if you're a soccer head, that's the show for you, and a whole lot more. So you can uh, check out the listings as well on FatsRadio.com because all of our sports shows are syndicated over there. That's P-H-A-T-Z, Radio.com, pretty hot and tempting with a Z on the end, Radio.com. For air times of all your favorite WRSPN shows, including our show, The War Room, which is on Sundays and Tuesdays at 3 p.m. It's finally here, fellas. Yo, can y'all can y'all just describe this feeling to to people that may not understand? I don't really. The people that don't understand probably aren't listening to the show. But just in case, can y'all describe this feeling to people that that just don't understand? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I just think it, it, it's better than the first time you grow, but you get it. I mean, that, that's all I'm asking to try it. Yo, <laughs> the anticipation is out of control right now. Um, yo, I'm just elated. Um, fantasy wise, I feel better because I was, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys that's been in fantasy football for a long time and had so many leagues, but now I dwindle it down so I can really pay attention and not have to root against my team. I'm excited yeah. about that. I'm excited to see everything. Here's the crazy part: everybody knows me, knows I'm a lifelong Denver Broncos fan. The one thing I'm not excited about is the Broncos. Um, I know that sounds crazy <laughs> as hell. <laughs> um, we'll get into that later, but like our regular season means nothing to me at this point. But I'm just excited overall to have football back. I mean, football, like we just said before we came on, like the storylines in football are amazing, um, and it's very entertaining. It's like drama all week long. Yeah, so, I'm and just, I, you know, it's like, it's like it's like soap opera for men. I, yeah, because I think that's the biggest part. Like you said, it's drama all week long because a lot of people, and you know, including myself, and I know I can speak for Jimmy, like. Basketball to us is is that thing of ours. Like we love basketball, oh, yeah. but it's 
it's different when we're talking professional sports. It's just it's different because the drama of the NFL, the fact that you know it's one game a week. You know, for if you have a team that you root for, everything means a whole lot more. Like we love basketball, but eighty-two games, like you know, I can miss a couple games and it's good. Like you can't you miss know football. I don't like to miss a play of a football game. To the NFL's credit, they do a great job of like telling their stories and building their mm-hmm. brand. Like the NFL doesn't play any games when it comes to marketing or making money for that matter. You see, the NFL finds a way to pinch a penny out of anything. But um, <laughs> they do a, their they owners, do a great five hundred k, yeah. <laughs> Yo, everything, man. But the fact of the matter is they do a great job of telling these stories, playing up these stories. It's literally like a male soap opera from week to week, the way the stories transpire. You have the, mm-hmm. the predictions for the next game and all the drama behind it. and they, It's amazing how they tell their story, and they're the best in sports at doing that. Baseball is right. terrible. Basketball is a little better than that, but football is king when it comes to telling the story. And that's well, basketball, why it's, basketball is not really the story. They just want to tell us about the players. <laughs> they tell us about the dudes, like yeah, yeah. But you know what though, basketball if they do a better job. Like they have, they have an ability to do that if they. Because think about this, like let's think about something like hard knocks, right? Mm-hmm. Imagine that in the NBA, and I know they try to do it with the association, but it's different because they try to follow a team the whole season, which is whack. But just something like uh, camp, because in the NFL, it's like so many people on a roster, you only can get but there's so many stories. But imagine being able to go, um, you know, in depth with an NBA team. That would make you, like, you know, all season root for that team. I was telling you guys earlier that, yo, I'm, like, high on the Falcons, and I don't know if it's because they're good or because I've been watching Hard Knock. But that's the <laughs> And it's not – if you watch the NFL Network all week long, it's like it's no way you can't fall in love with the sport because they do a great job of selling their product. Yeah, I mean, because you're right. Like, like, first of all, HBO, they can make any – they can sell you anything. Like, I can watch, like, a, a, a Domino's tournament if they do it like 24-7 or hard knocks and we'll be excited as hell because they make the drama. But um, I think personally this may have been the worst hard knocks, but I was still glued to the TV because it's just interesting to me to see the inner workings of, of football and the stories that they tell. So, I mean, they even – You even you really think it was the worst? I, I probably – probably I mean, that's not a diss because – No, no, I understand what you're saying, but – I, I that's, that's, that's something we need to like uh, – yeah, right. Something it might about be it, the, talk about because I wonder what do you think is the best if you could think on and the it's top. Not, of your head. It's, it's not the editing. It's just you know how we like train wrecks. We like you know the. the oh the, yeah, they, they didn't the have a T.O. Didn't have that many Lewis, characters. You like, know what I'm saying? Yeah, they didn't really the didn't funniest, have any. I mean, Roddy White tried to be that, but he really wasn't. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Like, Yo, the you know, funniest scene in the, of the whole series was the very last scene as the credits were rolling when they were playing cards. That was like the funniest scene. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Yo, I the funniest I laughed. HBO can tell you a story, and you just be captivated by it. Yeah, HBO is great at that. But I, the, the, when I laughed the hardest, when they had the rookies up there singing, and boys start singing, feeling on your booty. Yeah, I fell out my couch. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, um, all right. NFL is well, back. We're all excited, yeah. and, you know, let's have it. All right, well, Jimmy, you go ahead and tell everybody what happened this week while they were on the grind. <laughs> Most of that was about football. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is true. This is true. And for those listening, possibly for the first time, shame on you. But if you are listening, tell a friend. On the Grind is brought to you by DirecTV. If you'd like a better TV experience than cable has to offer, which includes the NFL Sunday ticket, it's the best time to get it right now. Go to you our website, forumsports.com. <laughs> Click on the DirecTV logo, order a better TV experience at a discounted Warham Sports sign-up rate. You call yourself a sports fan? How can you not have DirecTV? Let's get yeah. into it. Let's talk about uh, one of our favorite guys, uh, Josh Gordon, who gives us plenty of news. Josh Gordon um, gave us a lot of news when there was downtime in sports just with his behavior. But listen, Josh Gordon has a new gig right now. My man is selling cars because he has to do something (laughs) right now. What do you guys think about Josh Gordon selling cars? And would you buy a car from Josh Gordon? Man, I just want to start off by saying free Josh Gordon. Like, I can get into a whole thing about how Josh Gordon is just a symbolism of our whole penal system in this country, but I'm going to chill. I'm just going to chill on that. Like, I mean, if you think, like, Ray, Ray Rice is just going to be on the field, like, three weeks from now, and then Josh Gordon is just going to be, rest, you know, just down for the whole season. But I would absolutely buy a car for Josh Gordon. I mean, he seems like he knows how to have a good time, and he seems like he knows what kind of car to sell you, so you can have a good time. 
Hey, and if you buy one from, you know, when you buy cars, you know, sometimes the dealer give you a little incentive to give you a little free accessory or something. I think Josh Gordon might have a little <laughs> something for you in the in the glove compartment or in the middle, you know, <laughs> a little something for your for your business. But no, this is this is interesting. It's a crazy story. I mean, Josh Gordon, you know, he's still playing on a rookie contract, so it's not like his money is that long. I mean, he was scheduled to make like $800,000. That's nothing to sneeze at. But at the same time, if he's not going to work this year, he is in a position where he probably needs to go out and get a job. Um, He tried to um, explore the possibility of playing in the CFL, but, you know, for contractual reasons, that couldn't happen. So, hey, I mean, they took him. I'm pretty sure the car dealership is thinking, you know, we can benefit from this because they they made him the ambassador of the, the Sar- Sarkioni Auto Group. So besides <laughs> actually selling cars on the floor, because he will be doing that, they said he's going to be um, heading up all of their local community efforts and stuff. So, you know, yeah, they're going to use it to their advantage. That sounds like one of those college no-show jobs. Well, you just yeah, I'm yeah, the ambassador. Yeah. I'm the ambassador for the, this car dealership. What do you do? He's, <laughs> he's going to get commissions you, you, for cars that he didn't sell, and he's going to show up when they need when they do a community event, and that'll be it. But you really want Josh Gordon to represent you in the community? Is that what you're, that's that what you're doing? <laughs> hey, he's famous. <laughs> people are going to come out because, like we just said, people love a train wreck. Come on, if, if, yeah, if I was an idol worshiper, and they said uh, Josh Gordon was going to be at the dealership today. Handing out mini footballs or something, I go get one. <laughs> yeah, you put Flavor Flavor in my local car dealership right now. I guarantee you, I'm going to at least check it out. See what's going I'm on. I'm at least see. I'm at least see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> flavor, yeah, get a couple flavor. Pitch, get a couple pictures. Get a couple pictures to post on Instagram, clowning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but one I mean, thing though, okay, Jim. I was just going to say real quick that Josh has to get an award. <laughs> Jim, you beat me. You beat me to the uh, to the buttons because that's what I was about to do. He definitely has to get an award, not for getting a job because that's the good part about it, but for being in this position in the first place where you got to go hot cars for that, for. That was months. my next point. My next point is on a positive <laughs> note. I hope that he appreciates the opportunity that has been afforded to him now. That you know, hopefully he humbles himself after this ordeal and doesn't jump right back in trouble. But we know that Josh Gordon is always in trouble, so. You know, but we'll see what happens, man. You know, let, let's hope for the best for Josh Gordon. Breaking news. Anyway. It's not really breaking. I for, man, we didn't get our breaking news sound bite yet, Jim. But uh, did y'all hear that Kyrie Irving got injured? In the, uh, Uh-oh, uh, I did not hear that. Broke up. Yeah, I don't Uh-oh. know what it is, but he looked like he was gripping his back, and he was laying on the floor for a while. So we'll, figure, we'll find out what that is. I'll, I'll report back. <laughs> All right, but listen to this story happened? right here, Jim. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Wes Welker. He suspended four games for allegedly popping Molly. He thinks that he was um, drugged. Nonetheless, um, four games, and, you know, there's been a couple NFL athletes that have been suspended for this drug. I mean, what do you guys think about Wes Walker? I mean, he's a heady player. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Wes Walker is very adamant in saying, I do not do drugs. He said, I don't. He said, I don't do marijuana. He's like, Molly, I don't even know what a Molly is. Like, he's saying this kind of stuff, and you want to believe him, but you also wanted to believe Ryan Braun when when he made the same type of argument and tried to make us feel stupid for believing that he would do drugs and then look at it like he did drugs. So after him, Lance Armstrong, like, I don't trust anybody. So Wes Welker might be telling the truth, but, you know, he lost his appeal. He's going to serve his four-game suspension. And as far as I'm concerned right now, whether you did it or not, He's a Molly user. <laughs> yeah, yo, what, Wes Walker needs more people. Like, let's just, let's just be honest. No, no, nobody believes this. Like, well, like, we, we don't like, believe you. You need more people. Absolutely. Like, how is he going to act like we didn't see him at the Kentucky Derby with, like, the tan suit on? Like, apparently, like, just giving out hundreds of people and, like, you, you just didn't know? Like, something that maybe you... You were drugged, like you just thought, like this is what you do. Like we're not fools. Like people think we're idiots. I hate when athletes like treat us like we're stupid. <laughs> yeah, so I here's a, my too thing. many of us. Here's too many of us fell for the Ryan Braun. I'm not falling for the Ryan Braun no more. Because here's the thing, yo. 
Your excuse is an epic fail, uh, Wes Walker. You should fail. <laughs> As a, as a professional athlete, what you have to realize is you have more on the line than the average person. Even not being a professional athlete, depending upon where you are in your life, you're no longer a 16, 17-year-old. You're a grown man with responsibilities, and you have to watch your surroundings, specifically being someone who's a public figure with all that all, all those other added responsibilities. you got to be careful. How could you put yourself in a position where you could be drug that way? That, that's my thing. Like, you know, you get to be smarter, man. Like, you know, and like like Frank just said, we saw his behavior in public, which didn't seem, you know, uh, the same way he tries to carry himself, his image that he portrays. He didn't seem that way um, when he was at the Kentucky Derby. Um, so Maybe they slipped it in there at the Kentucky Derby, though. Maybe a Patriots fan, a rich Patriots fan, slipped him a Mickey at the Derby. That's a possibility. And he started tripping that's after. That's a possibility because Patriots fans <laughs> are out of their mind. Um, they're upset because their team has won since they stopped cheating. <laughs> So, well, that so, so, Deb, what you're saying is that the Patriots fan might have been spying on him and just waited for the perfect opportunity. <laughs> Kentucky yeah, Derby that's spying. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> but with that being said, though, you, you are on my team, but it doesn't matter, though. You still have to get in the world. Yo, I just took a yeah. sip of water that didn't taste too good. Somebody might have slipped me a molly, so if I start tripping, <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> He's sweating. Yo. Let's talk about one Gino Oriema. Um, he got I'm reported by too. a rival school for actually calling Mono, Monet Davis uh, during a Little League World Series. Now, Monet Davis did say that one of her dreams was to play at UConn. Now, he reached out and wished her uh, good luck. Well, at least that's what he said he did. Who else? You know, who else knows what he did? But, um, you know, college sports is no joke. What do you guys think about this story? Hmm. I, I think it just shows like when you're when you're on top, like everybody's trying to take you down, basically. I mean, I don't like you, you know, Ariama really. For some reason, there's something about him that just he, he seems like like a used car salesman, like he's just trying to sell you something that's not real. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I I just think. I mean, it, it seems kind of petty for the rival school to report him for this. It just seems like when when you're on top, somebody's always trying to take you down. That's that's kind of the vibe I got. Fishy, fishy. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a little fishy, though. I mean, you see that the little girl openly says she wants to play for UConn. You give her a little wink-wink phone call. Congratulations on, the you know, what you did in the World Series. Wink-wink. You know, I'll see you later. Wink-wink. Um it, it it seemed like something that did. It, if he was going to cheat, like it really didn't need to be done. She's already made a decision of where she wants to play. So, you know, I don't see why he would go out of his way to tamper with that situation. So it could have been something innocent. I mean, she's turned into a, a celebrity overnight in this whole thing. So who knows? But, you know, the school who reported it, <laughs> they have yet to identify themselves, though. So, like, how weak is that? Like you're gonna snitch? Like put your name behind it, as uh, as as my man Herm Edwards would say. Like put your name behind it. Like what's the point of that? Yeah, yeah we, don't, mean, we don't deal with these anonymous sources. Yeah, none of that. Yeah, yeah. Here's the thing, man. It's like this. I I thought about this when they said that he called her. I'm like, ah, oh, that's gonna come off that way. But then nothing came of it uh, right away, so no one else said anything. But then the story came out. It doesn't shock me. But like Dev said, she already said that's where she wanted to go, so what could he possibly say? I mean, if she's as talented in basketball as they say she is, where else is she going to go? Um, you know, maybe Louisiana Tech? <laughs> he kind of said that in terms of, you know, Louisiana Tech has a good team. too. I'm just saying, like, you know, I don't understand this story. It's, it's BS. Uh, Gina was just a, is I think the call was just like a, we hear you type of call. We we hear you. Like, you know, we're watching. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But, hey, I'm not the NCAA. I know they got some real petty rules, so he he might have broke some of them. Who knows? Yeah. You know, the thing is this. Like, I always wonder about Gino Warrior because he never gets credit for his accomplishments. And it, it's pretty much, you know, it's a sexist issue. It's because he coaches the females. I always wanted to see him take a shot at coaching either uh, men's college basketball or even in the NBA because he's been offered an NBA job just to see if he can really do it because he's never going to get the credit he deserves even though he dominates at a high level, for, has been dominating for a long time at this point. You don't want to mess up those wins. 
<laughs> you're not going to mess it's up. Like, why record. go anywhere? Why, why yeah. go anywhere when you're already the king? And I get that. So right. shut the story, Emma, or whatever school you are, yo, if you can't identify yourself, stop snitching, man. You know what I mean? Yo, to, that, some money. to the snitch school? Now, Shame. this next story, it's the last story I want to talk about before we move on, but, I mean, get the button ready, Dev. As simple as that, because <laughs> Ray McDonald of the San Francisco 49ers was arrested for alleged domestic violence, and this came after the commissioner talked about the new policy where, you know, two times and you're out of the league. Less this than a came week. After, this came after, you know, a week after that, he gets arrested now. I say alleged because, you know, he could have, like, a um, you know, a young lady trying to get a couple of dollars off of him. I don't know all the facts. But with that being said, if he did do this, what's wrong with you, man? You know what I was thinking yeah. about? Maybe he was, like, just really upset about the new rule. Like, he just got really angry, then all of a sudden, like, you know, allegedly, his, his girl might have came in, like, oh, what's going on? What are you so angry about? And then, you know, just got a sense of frustration. Well, well I mean, like, all uh, I know is that if they're holding Niners games, unless they're holding Niners games at the state penitentiary, I don't think they got much of a chance to do. <laughs> yeah, well, they're going to be running with uh, Adam Sandler and them. <laughs> but look. This is the longest yard. <laughs> Wasn't this at a party yeah. or something? I think I heard it was a whole lot of 49ers there. Of course, a lot of them, you know, they could be telling the truth or or they could just be defending their teammate. But a lot of them said, you know, they didn't see anything. Um, they didn't know anything went down. Uh, the woman, when she reported the whole thing, had visible injuries. But, you know, there hasn't been anybody who stepped up yet to say they saw any of this happen. So, you know, hopefully for his sake, you know, it's it's – Somebody who's, you know, who who has an axe to grind or maybe just wants something out of the deal. Um, but then again, hopefully for the sake of women who fight against this type of thing all the time, you know, hopefully somebody's not crying wolf and giving their calls a bad name. So it's it's a crazy situation. But he definitely should be ashamed of, his, of himself if this is true. Because, look, man, they just made a rule against this. Man, one more strike and you are out. The 49ers defense is falling apart at the seams and it really has it doesn't have injury or <laughs> a little bit of free agency, a little bit of injury and a lot of getting in trouble with the law. But you know, he he you know, he hasn't gone through the process yet. So if you guys were Harbaugh, would you play him this week? Mm, good question. But, because Hell then you, yeah. you you're 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 looking at your own like reputation right there, like your own integrity. But hey, he's not oh, yeah. been found guilty. Listen, I mean, man, I would play this because you know you got to assume like if 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 you employ this guy, I'm assuming that you think he's well. I would hope so that you think he's at least a good person or you know somebody that wouldn't do something like this. But you got to assume he's innocent. So yeah, I would play him. Listen, man, you got to do you got to. You got to do what you got to do. You can't be scared of the league and all that. It's all about winning, man. You got to beat the Cowboys. <laughs> you got to beat the Cowboys. Yeah. That's right. Fear does not exist in this dojo. Like like my man from Cobra Kai said on Karate Kid, you got to do whatever. No mercy. By the way, I love Karate Kid. It's one of the greatest 80s movies of all time. I'm side note. <laughs> Middle body bag. Yeah. We need that on the soundboard. <laughs> Yo, I watch Just for no reason. On my on my mind. no reason we need that on the soundboard. Just play it at random times. Yo, we definitely do it. Yo, we definitely do because I've been on my 80s movies, y'all, like Karate Kid. But, yo, Back to the Future 2 is the greatest movie ever. <laughs> I could sit and watch the whole trilogy. I mean, especially since it's on cable every week somewhere. Yeah, every week they yeah. play that whole trilogy like four times in a weekend. And I get <laughs> caught watching it I know that every time. Nothing. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I figured I'd say that because, like I said, I was just watching it, and, um, you know, who doesn't like movies? Anyway, man, that is what happened while you were on the grind. Dev, give some birthday shout-outs. No birthday. doubt. As y'all know, birthdays are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Uh, do you or your business need a custom website? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable 
custom website solutions. You need digital extreme technologies. No need to break the bank for an effective online presence. Top quality results driven web websites at an incredibly affordable price. Financing options are available, so you can put the website on layaway. Not really layaway, but you could pay as you go, kind of like Colin Kaepernick's uh, contract. Just visit <laughs> digitalextremetech.com or call 267-205-4203. And for discounted rates, be sure to tell them War Room Sports My sent you. Yay! No Floyd on the drop. All right, yesterday's birthdays, because uh, Javon Curse, the former uh, feared defensive end, in the, in the NFL, I heard somebody compare J.J. Watt to a, to a young Javon Curse. Y'all like that comparison? I thought it was pretty good, actually. I mean, they used to call I mean, yeah, him free. J.J.'s a freak. But I want to see him do it, uh, you know, like um, Paul's, um, during the regular season because the one thing people forget about Javon Curse because of the injuries and the way his you know, career ended, in the beginning of his career, he was amazing, yo. They were yeah. talking about him being, like, you know, an all-time great. And you know he started getting injured and and and, and things went downhill. So, Yo, know, when Jimmy, he when he played for Philly, Jimmy, every single snap he was on the ground rolling around. And then you know he get up <laughs> next snap, he's on the ground rolling around hurt. Like every play, Javon Curse was, was injured. And it's well, like he was so athletic when he was younger. I mean, his nickname was the Freak. Yeah. Because he was a freak of nature. I mean, people forget, man. Yeah. Well, shout out to him. He turned, <laughs> he turned 38 yesterday. Uh, also, George Lynch, uh, former NBA player, turned 44 yesterday. Another former NBA player, somebody who never met a shot that he didn't like. He was a journeyman, but he still was that dude to come off the bench and give you almost 20 a night. Chris Gatling turns 47, Yo, and he was I a think Gatling. Chris Gatling played for every team in the NBA. <laughs> Yeah, he averaged at least 12 on every one of them. He averaged 20 and 10. (laughs) He he didn't play any defense. Yo, he shook people's hands when they dunked on him. Remember? Yeah, when when he the one that shook Sean Kemp? Sean Sean Kemp Kemp dunked on him. He got up and shook his hand like, yo, good (laughs) dunk. He he got up and gave him a high five because he got banged on. (laughs) Um, Benny Blades, former defensive back for the Detroit Lions, turned 48 yesterday. Ernest Givens, one of... Uh, Warren Moon's targets in that run and shoot. Uh, he turns 50. Uh, 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 former NBA coach, former NBA great coach Dick Mata turned 83 yesterday. And the birthdays today, just two of them: Mike Piazza, uh, a former catcher for the Mets from the Philly area. Shout out to him, PSP. Um, and Tom Watson, the golfer, turned 65. So we like to give a nice big war room salute to all of these gentlemen My on birthday. their birthday. Yeah. And real yeah, you quick, know, KC we... Mack got a time and then give us one that uh, oh, yeah, we, we didn't good. mention, um, and that is Lloyd Daniels, a.k.a. Mr. UNLV. Shot okay, to Lloyd, Lloyd. Daniels. Was he on drugs? <laughs> 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 <That's a great laughs> well, you got to bring up old stuff, right? Happy birthday, though. <laughs> like, when are you on drugs? Happy birthday. All right, boy, <laughs> before, before we... <laughs> before we Yo, y'all, y'all, y'all ain't cool, man. That man had a problem, man. Yo, that was just the first thing that came to mind. I apologize, Miss Lloyd. Stay off that side. Yeah, hey, Lloyd what? Daniels, bro. Stay away from the crack, which I think is pretty good advice. Unless you can manage it socially, Dan. If you can manage it socially, then go for it. But not a lot of people can, you know. He said go for it, though. All right, man. Before we get into these hot topics, man, you guys can check out our website at warroomsports.com. While, you, while you're there, just be sure to sign up for the War Report. That's our weekly newsletter. Click on the Contact Us tab to send a message to us about our company, our show, and inquire about sponsorship and advertising opportunities. For general inquiries, you can email us at info at warroomsports.com. While you're browsing the site, click on the Memorabilia tab. Buy some cool stuff. You can click the Blog tab to read our latest sports articles in the All's Fair and Sports and War blog. Then click the respective icons and tabs to like our Facebook page, to follow us on Twitter, to subscribe to our iTunes podcast, to watch our videos at warroomsportstv.com. Uh, we got Frank Santos in the house from Sports Kings. We got uh, two two webcasts that we do uh, with those guys. One is Field Vision. Um, that's our NFL football webcast. And the other is Court Vision. That's our NBA basketball webcast. So check that stuff out on warroomsportstv.com as well. 
Um, you can also uh, check out our network shows at WRSPN.com and to download our free War Room Sports mobile app, do that and you can get everything I just mentioned right there on the go on your own device. So join the JW Philly Realty chat room right now during the show at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. To enter the chat room, just sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If you don't want to do that, you can sign in through your Facebook and Twitter accounts. While you're there, click follow. You can get updates and reminders about the show every week. We're going to be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, and the chat room during the show. This is football kickoff day, everybody. So get in the chat room. Let your voice be heard. If you want to call in and speak with us about some football, just dial the Digital Exchange Tech hotline, 323-410-0012. Just press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. So let's get into some hot topics real quick. Jimmy, yes, sir. you want to if tell everybody who hot topics are brought to them by. If your schedule is too hectic to read as much as you want, try audiobooks and kick back and let someone else do the reading for you. All you have to do is visit Audible and sign up for your free trial. That's at audibletrial.com slash Sports. In no time, you can be listening to the latest bestsellers, hands-free, stress-free, while getting other things done at the same time. I listen to a lot of great sports books through Audible. Uh, Bill Russell, um, Mike Tyson, um, Wilt sure, Chamberlain, right. all kinds of great uh, sports books are on Audible, and you can listen to them. And that is how you read a drop. No money team. <laughs> Yo, I think with with audio books, they should give you like each book should give you a choice of the voice you want to hear reading to you because I you know I would do like a female voice every time, but yeah, they no, should do no. that. Like they should give you a choice of maybe like three or four voices because. Yo, but let know, me tell you something that's that's, that's probably once next. You, once that's you, probably coming. Once you have an audible account, me, mother. Once you have an Audible account, right? Book it takes Here's six the thing weeks. about Audible. If you have an Audible account, they allow you to buy like the regular book, say on Kindle, and they will let you open the Kindle book up. Audible will read it to you and highlight the words. You could be like looking at it, and it's reading Damn. it to you, but highlight the words at the same time. So, there's a lot of dope stuff going on, man. You know, yeah. shout out to Audible for the support of the War Room, man. We appreciate it, but uh, you already know. Yo. But you, you said they read it to you and highlight the words at the same time? I think yeah, Audible's so trying to call it's, you stupid. Yeah, so it's, it's literally <laughs> like, yo, you, you're reading it, but is someone reading it to you? Like, it's just a function. It's dope when you see it done. Like, damn, that's crazy. That's, but, yeah, uh, I yeah. think that that, 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 that feature is for cats that read like this. You know what I'm saying? Murray, get in the lane. Murray, get Eat little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yo. Um, <laughs> Fred Perdue, our Miami Hurricanes insider for Sports Talk Florida, um, he can't join us uh, today, but he gave us his games of the week and his picks, so, you know, we don't have the analysis that, that he would have come on and given to you, but we do have his picks. So his games of the week – um, he has USC over Stanford, 24-20, to Ohio State over Virginia Tech, 21-17, to Notre Dame over Michigan, 31-30, Oregon over Michigan State, 42-24. to That's a little disrespectful. And uh, he always has to give you Miami score because, you know, that's who he works for. But Miami's only playing FAMU this week out of the MEAC. So he has Miami over FAMU, 42-7. to Um when he told me that, I kind of for ducking like, us, for ducking yeah, us I'm, I'm, Miami got <laughs> pulverized oh, yeah. by Louisville. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Talk but down. when he talked about the FAMU game to me, I was thinking like forty-two. That's all you're going to put on a MEAC team. But he was talking about how Miami's offense isn't that great yet. So you know, forty-two is is pretty much all you're going to get from him. But you know, any hey. team worth their salt would beat a MEAC team like seventy to nothing. So. <laughs> <laughs> Akron Akron beat my alma mater, Howard University, forty one to nothing last week. So Damn. Miami should be I able to do a little money in Akron. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh Oh, I'm sorry. He also had a, a NFL opening day uh score. I wanna know what you guys think about this. He has the Seahawks over the Packers this evening, thirty one to seventeen. I yeah, think I that Seahawks gonna score thirty one points. I think that Fred may have been drugged, um, like Wes Welker or something. 
Because first off, even if the even if the Seahawks do win, how are they going to score 31 points? And I understand that the Packers defense may not be that impressive, but I also think that um, Fred has something against the Packers because uh, you know if you guys watch Phil Vision or you do watch Phil Vision, you see how um, he's like so pro Chicago Bears. Like they must have more players from the U on their team than the Packers. Like so that's how he made his decision because. He's totally against the Packers. But Stay away from the crack, seven. which I think yeah. is pretty good advice. Unless you <laughs> – Yeah. That, that score, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I have, I have, said on field vision, he said, have, you have a quarterback like Jay Cutler, how can you lose? But, yeah. <laughs> like, I think the Seahawks may win, but 31-17 is disrespectful, y'all. It is. Yeah. I think you I want mean, to know the other if, part if, of it. I think if it's because Aaron, if, if the Packers lose, that means Aaron Rodgers can make a case for being worse than Tom Brady. I, I think that's a little bit of motivation behind it, too. Oh, there's always some hidden motivation. You know, there's always some hidden motivation when Fred talks about NFL. But shout out to Fred Purdue. Uh, thanks for your, for your college games of the week. And we will see you next week, brother. All right, let's talk one NBA story. Real quick, then, real quick, real quick, okay. real quick. Um, um, Leroy, Leroy is in our chat room. He said that um, he didn't get our pick'em. He didn't advertise our pick'em. I just want to say real quick that um, it is on our Facebook page. Um, so anybody listening can go to our Facebook page and join the pick'em because you should join by the night so you can make uh, your picks. But uh, Leroy, yeah. check our Facebook page. Check our Twitter handle. We have been advertising it. And, um, we do yeah. have it. Our pick'em. We up. tweeted it uh, a little while ago too. So check that. Check the Twitter page. Definitely. Um, all right, and I, I'll, I'll put it back on the top of the Facebook page while we're while we're on the okay. show um, in a few minutes. But uh, one NBA story before we go full football on this: uh, Kevin Durant has chosen, not really chosen, to stay with Nike, but Nike matched that monster offer that Under Armour was uh, putting out there for Kevin Durant. Are you guys surprised that Nike matched this offer? Um, I was. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lie. I definitely was. I see the value in doing so when you look at the amount of money that he generates for them, but I didn't think they would because the whole time, like, you know, I'm like, if you pay him that, where are you going to play Raymond? LeBron Raymond James, regardless of how you feel about him, is worth <laughs> more than Kevin Durant. Uh, his sneakers allegedly outsell Durant's, which is news to me because I, I live in Philadelphia and most people I see wear Durant. I, I rarely see anyone wearing LeBron. But, and, well, and I'm in the Washington area, so I see all Durant's, but it might be a regional thing. Might be a regional. It might be a regional. Maybe it's like an East Coast thing. Like maybe in the Midwest, like, everybody wears LeBron. Who knows? But with that being said, uh, that's the first thing I thought of. Then I'm like, yo, Le- then I'm like, yo, LeBron set this whole thing up. I think it was me and B. Austin or me and you were talking like, LeBron set this whole thing in motion. Oh, yeah. He said, this oh, is he a Maverick Carter up uh, presentation right here. Like, yo, <laughs> l- listen, man, LeBron's new name is LeBron Gecko because I don't think LeBron cares about basketball. I don't think he cares about winning championships. He's all about building his portfolio and making as much money as possible. So my conspiracy theory is that he set this whole thing up with Under Armour, played him against Nike just to get KD more money because now they got to re-up with him. And he's <laughs> about to, like, take him to the shed and make him drop the bag off. No <laughs> Yeah, Under Armour got Chris Bosh. You know, like Chris, you know how Chris Bosh played the Rockets. Like that's how KD just played Under Armour. I was, I was honestly surprised Nike match. I can't remember who, who said it. It might have been Nate Jones on Twitter, who's a good follower on Twitter. Um, he said, like, you know, if I were Nike, you could like just put KD in an office and be like, listen, I can sign these ten guys for the money I'm about to pay you and make more money. Like I can sign Kyrie Irving and you know all these maybe lesser stars, but all, all ten of them together. First of all, they don't need their own signature sneaker, and you know, all together, they'll probably make us more money than you. So I was really surprised that they matched. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah, I, mean, I, I, was, I was, I was surprised as well. Um, for the for the same reasons, because Nike is at a point where they don't necessarily need the name to sell them, you know, as much as the name, you know, might need Nike for for their brand. So I, I was definitely surprised. Um, it may just be one of those situations Nike has that kind of money to to toss. I mean, it's not like they're tossing it away. They're getting return on their investment. But at the same time, I'm thinking we're just not going to lose to this little dude. So let's just give yeah, him the money. Yeah, sort of like and, uh, <laughs> shout to Hank for imaginary players. Because Hank made up a point um, when the whole thing started. Hank said that uh, Nike may pay him just to squash the little guy before the little guy could even, like, step up to him. Mm-hmm. Like, before, before no market share for you. 
Yo, before you puff your chest out, I'm just gonna smack you in the face and let you know what it is. Yeah, like, I'm, I mean, I'm that that might be true too, because if I remember correctly, Under Armour has another big player. I want to say it's Steph Curry that that uh, they do. Their they do too. So you get you get Steph Curry and KD. Now you're making noise. You know what I mean? So you're you're right. So, I mean, Nike might just try, try to squash that. Yeah, and Frank, yeah, because Steph this Curry. week Steph, Steph Curry was kind of beefing with Bomani Jones on Twitter because Bom- Bomani Jones tweeted at Kevin Durant saying. You know, thank God you didn't, you know, take that money and go to Under Armour. And he was talking about their shoes. So Steph Curry kind of, as a matter of yeah, fact, what he, said, he mentioned here, here Steph Curry's shoes. Here was a comment. Shoes. The comment was uh, somebody somebody tweeted at Bomani and was like, the whole negotiation with Durant, they probably pulled him in the room and was like, pulled out Steph Curry's shoe and was like, look at this. Need we say more? And he got up and Bomani left. retweeted it like laughing. And Steph Curry came Steph right Curry. at him like, "Why are you talking about my shoe?" I'm like, "Damn!" <laughs> there you go. I, I can. Yo, yo, and then, let, I mean, at the end, Bomani was yo, like, yo, yo, man, yo, just Steph Curry's light skin with a baby yeah. face. He wasn't gonna do nothing." <laughs> I'm like, "Yo, he came off like a dark skin dude. He kind of light skin too. Light skin to be acting like that, but uh, you know, like that." And Bomani squashed it. Bomani was like, "Look, count, <laughs> cash your checks. You know what I mean, it is what it is." Yeah, yeah. I mean, he basically saying, "Dog, you don't have to be out here, like." You know, defending these ugly kicks, man. Just cash your checks. You won. Like, there's no reason to to get listen. hyped with anybody on Twitter for coming at your shoes. Everybody's Somebody not gonna like your shoes. Take a check for a shoe. You got people signed up with Lee Ning. Shout to D Wade. Um, back in the day, Karl Malone had a sneaker deal with L.A. Gear. I mean, and L.A. Gear literally stands for Ladies Athletic Gear. <laughs> <laughs> but he was counting them checks. Like Yo, a Walter lady. Payton signed a deal with Kangaroos. Remember them? Uh-huh. <laughs> so it was like when these small brands come up, if they got a check, like, yo, people will sit down for that check. No, yeah, but Walter Payton tried to make it look cool, had a headband that said Ruse. Like, because yeah, Ruse. Like, you check it kangaroo, kangaroo, just Ruse. That don't make it like, cool. That's not going to work, sweetness. Yeah. <laughs> sweetness wearing Ruse. Come on. That whole picture was kind of. People, we gonna get, you know, we're going to get slandered. You can't talk about sweetness, Jimmy. Can't talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. I know, I know. And the funny thing is, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, Walter Payton is probably like the goat running back. You know, um, that's not including Jim Brown because I didn't see him play, and I know my old head to kill me for that. But that I've seen play, I've never seen a back as great as Walter Payton. That includes Barry and Emmett. But just fell with your nickname, nickname. Sweetness, though, B. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetness, B. <laughs> Sweetness, B. I mean, stuff was more acceptable back then. You know, it was a, it was a different time. So, you know, when you say something was sweet, that was cool slang back then. Think about yeah. it. Then when we were talking about it earlier today, like you just if if you go back and listen to Dre Day, like a lot of stuff they were saying, like you can't say that stuff now. Like yo, you would think that. I mean, Dre has one been of my questioned favorite rappers of all time, but he said some of the most suspect things ever. <laughs> I listen to music now and be like, how did they get away with saying that? Like, yo, like I was listening to a BBB song, and he was literally talking about being backstage with an adolescent. <laughs> yo. Yeah, yeah, he sure was. You know, he said backstage, <laughs> underage, adolescent. I'm like, yo, he said yo, that. It came Day? on the radio, too. Dre Day? You are gay. Come on, dog. <laughs> you can't do that. All right, man. Uh, NFL story. This one isn't uh, anything that happened on the field. We know Colts owner Jim Ursay, uh, he pleaded guilty earlier this week to his misdemeanor DUI uh, charge, and the league, less than three hours later, came down with his his quote-unquote punishment. He got suspended for six games, fined for $500,000, but a lot of fans and players aren't happy about it. What do you guys think about it, like? Was there anything I, I more find, that they could do or should have done? I don't know if there's more they could do, but I find it hilarious suspending an owner game. Like, what are you really doing about suspending yeah. him six games? What the hell does that even mean? Yeah, See, but this, I agree. This is, the, this is the thing, Jim. Like, when when we were having these conversations on the Facebook page prior to this ever happening, um, you know, because people were – First of all, people were up in arms because he hadn't gotten a punishment yet. Every time somebody else got punished for something – Somebody came on the page like, did Jim Irsay get punished yet? Not realizing that they couldn't do anything until, you know, something happened in the court system, um, whether he got, you know, found guilty or, in his case, he pled, you know, he pled guilty, so they were able to go ahead and do what they had to do. But the rules are kind of in place. Like, before this even happened, 
you know, I did a little research and realized first the maximum fine they could give him for an offense like this was 500k. So they gave him the maximum. The thing that wasn't really written in stone is how many games he could be suspended. But I kept telling people before, like, what are you really going to do to an owner that's going to make a difference that's not going to look like a slap on the wrist to the fans? And everybody yeah, answered that's, to that's that with point. draft picks. But you can't take draft picks. And, and Roger Goodell, when he when the punishment came down, he also explained this to everybody who took the time to read the thing. They can't take draft picks from somebody um, for – an offense that didn't have anything to do with competition. Because people were saying, exactly. well, precedence is set. They did it for Spygate. Spygate directly had, an, you know, it had a direct effect or at least a potential effect on competition. They were cheating. Like, they got advantages on the football field because of it. But because your owner's a drunk or whatever and he's out there getting DUIs, you can't really punish the organization by taking draft picks. So, there was nothing that they were going to be able to do that wasn't going to look like a slap on the wrist that weren't going to get fans all up in arms. They should have yeah, I think that's the main point, really. It, it's like, it, it, it seems like a light punishment, but at the same time, like, what else What else are you supposed to do that, that wouldn't be a light punishment? So, I mean, right. you know, especially if, like you're saying, I mean, if, if 500K is just the most they can find them just within the rules, sort of like the Donald Sterling thing where I think he was fined $2 million and that was, you know, the highest possible punishment, it's like, what, what else are you supposed to do aside from that? I don't I don't know what else fans want. I mean, I, yeah, I understand I, that it's comedy that he just gets to sit in his mansion. For, he can't come to, what, three home games <laughs> during this six-week span? He can't sit in his suite for, for three games. But what else are you going to do? Go ahead, Jim. What, what are your thoughts, Jim? They should have Donald Stelly and made him sell the team. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Yo, the I'm funny joking. thing is you're joking, but there's some people out there when you first said that probably like, yeah, and then you said I'm joking and destroyed their whole no, I mean, religion. at the end of the day, I don't know what you could have done that would have made everybody happy. You're not always going to make everybody happy. Um, I just think that once the night starts and Sunday starts, no one will care anyway. Oh, you're saying and, make, you can't make everyone happy. Man, Roger Goodell can't make anyone happy. I mean, <laughs> the dude, yo, he punished Ray Rice two games. Everybody went crazy about it. He comes back a week later saying, my bad, and, and gave, you know, guidelines for new punishment, and people are saying, that's too stiff. He can't win. Yeah. <laughs> people just don't like the cat. He can't win. But when I think about that in hindsight, that may be the move, and that may be the move here. Listen, we, we want to – because you really can't come down on Jim Irsay, right? Right. So what you but do you is – But you can make a rule after. Make the Irsay yeah. rule. Listen, <laughs> we, we're not going to tolerate this, so moving forward, here's the new rule. Yeah. And he may do that. So now we got the Ray Rice rule and the Earth rule. But at some point, you know, Goodell's going to just have to realize, look, the fans are never going to like you. I mean, they're programmed not to like you. If the, if one fan says he doesn't like you and gives a bogus reason why, everybody in his circle is going to follow suit. So stop trying to please everybody. You know what I'm saying? There was no precedence for the Ray Rice thing. Okay, you made a rule afterwards. Some of us think, it's, okay, cool. And yeah, and shout out to the people uh, are – in my fancy league, who uh, told me that uh, it was too soon for my team name, um, Beats by Ray. You know, so <laughs> I, I, I definitely, I definitely obliged and changed my team name to Hello, Rice to Beat You. So I hope they like that one better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, but but Jim, Beats by Ray, which one? Rice or McDonald's? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, another see, another I, one I, I would do. Dil- Dil- I did my due diligence, Jimmy. I, I waited a year before I named my team this year the Cooper's Pucks Plan. You know, I, I just gave it some time to breathe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay, you gave it time to breathe. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because I, I, I had a lot of names, but I was going to name it as, oh, you trying to help Rice? <laughs> <laughs> my movie has to catch that one. Oh, you trying to help Rice? You trying anyway. to help Rice? <laughs> Eat the cake, Anna man. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so yeah, yeah, I mean the Ursay situation. It's it's just funny to sit back and watch, you know, people talk and 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 be all up up in arms. But you know, there was really nothing. He's an owner. He's a team owner. There wasn't much that you were going to be able to do within your rights because when you start going out of you know the rule book and start doing things because that's what the fans want. That's when the lawsuits come. And that's what the NFL is trying to stay away from because they're getting sued about something different every two weeks. So, you know, for everybody out there saying they can take pit, take picks, okay, let them try, and you'll see, you know, them in court against Ursay 
probably losing because what he did just didn't have anything to do with competition. I'm not so defending the dude because there's no way he should be out there getting DUIs. But you know what's amazing, gentlemen? We talked earlier about how, how the NFL like does a great uh, job of marketing their product. Another thing the NFL has, and me and Dev were talking a little bit about this the other day, is the fans in the NFL are like worse than any other fan base. They will mm-hmm. talk about Jim Irsay or Ray Rice, but if it's someone on their team, they will like yo, <laughs> do the same pretty thing? much like shoot or box their mother for it. <laughs> yo, and it's it's amazing to me the loyalty that NFL teams get from their fans. They get loyalty unlike anybody, any other <laughs> franchise or any other sport. Like NFL, the loyalty that um, actual fans have for their NFL team is is out of control. Yo, a lot of people, and we definitely talked about this when we were talking about the whole Washington name thing. Yo, some people put their fandom for their team before their manhood. Like, seriously, Absolutely. you can sit there and defend that and just dismiss a whole race of people because it's your team. And then and then your argument to the people that you're arguing with is, well, you're a fan of this team, so that's why you're hating. Like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's when you just turned, you just did full delusion. You just full delusion. It's it's, it's a great point. study of human psychology because I've never seen anything like it. Like, we argue sports all the time on social media and even in the street. But when it comes to NFL teams, like, yo, people defend their players ungodly. Like, I remember, speaking of Washington fans, I remember Washington fans that I know um, called Donovan McNabb the scum of the earth. <laughs> the day he got the Redskins, it was like Super Bowl. He, was throw, he was the greatest quarterback in the history of the league. I mean, mm-hmm. even Cowboys fans right now, and we'll talk about this a little bit with the whole Michael Sam thing, like, yo, now they're like activists. I'm like, yo, <laughs> you were at all kinds of memes. Yeah, jokes, <laughs> jokes two weeks ago. Yeah, jokes two now weeks ago. Now you're an activist. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. like yo, the, the, the loyalty the NFL teams get are amazing, and I mean it goes to what we were talking about with Ursay. Like, I don't really know any Colts fans, but I'm pretty sure if you go out there, it's a whole different like story in terms of uh, right. his punishment. They probably think it's too much. Everybody, <laughs> I, I guarantee you, everybody that's defending him probably was like, yeah, get Donald Sterling out of the league, kill him if you have uh-huh. to. Uh huh. But now, but now, now they're, they're probably like, well, he's one of us. I mean, who doesn't take a drink and get caught? I mean, he made a mistake. He made a mistake. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. Because actually. Like, well, who hasn't been there? You know, who hasn't right. had one too many? And but, kind potentially. Of I mean, what are you going to do? Kill the guy? <laughs> potentially, Donald, I mean, uh, Jim Ursay, he had the potential to physically injure way more people Absolutely. than Donald Sterling by talking a little crap in his in his own mansion. So, you know. Listen, man. <laughs> I, I know one. people that have been affected. I know people that have been affected by drunk driving, and it's one of those things where you really don't understand how serious it is until it affects you. And it hasn't until affected it me personally, but I've talked to people, and when you hear their their stories and how sad they are, it is like I don't look at it. Some people look at it like nothing. That's like a misdemeanor. It it's not nothing. It's serious. Drunk driving is serious. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah, so All right. Right. So it's not, so, so we're driving while you're hard, Le'Veon Bell, just, just for the record. Yeah, one of our listeners actually chimed in one time. I think it was on Facebook. It was like, yo, his mother, you know, was just coming home from work and got hit by a drunk driver and died. Like, So you hear all these kind of crazy stories, and it's like, it's a serious offense. So it's like really nothing yeah. to joke about, although we'll joke about anything. But, I don't know. you know, people have to put it in this proper I, context. I don't know, Joe, because all the stories I hear about drunk driving accidents, like somebody else always dies and never the person who was drinking. I don't know if that's actually the case or that's just what we're, you know, what they kind of push on us. Either way, it's terrible. But it seems like every time I hear something about that, you know, the person who was who was 100% in the wrong is always the person that lives. So that's the crazy thing. We got a call on the, on the digital extreme tech we want to get to before we – before we give out our yeah, let's, let's, picks let's, and let's bring the homie on, a resident Chicago Chicago Bulls fan as well as Alabama Crimson Tide, old damn Tide, Tobias is on the line. What's up, Tobias? You there? Tobias, you there? All right, well, he was there. Can you hear us? Get back to us, Tobias. Bang. Um, Jim, let's. <laughs> Let's get into this football time. I mean, it's 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 football season. I'm sure that's what he wants to talk about. 
So we'll still yeah, be Tobias, on Tobias, get off your cricket phone. Call us from a landline, good brother. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah man, it's time to, it's time to uh, jump into this football talk because we got a lot okay. to talk about. Before you, you do that, to check out our me? website, warroomsports.com. If you want to call in and speak to us about any of today's topics, it better be about football. Uh, just dial that Digital Extreme Tech hotline. It's 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just press 1 if you want to talk. I think we got him back on the line, yeah. I, I'll let him on. All right, let's, let's, see, let's see if... Uh, Tobias, you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you yes, now. Sir. All right, roll tide with no enthusiasm because we're screwed <laughs> this year. <laughs> oh, you, uh, already? Hey, man, let's just be honest here. Those cornerbacks we got, I don't know why Nick Saban keep playing the old guys. They're no good. They can't play the ball and they're small. When you got two young bucks out there who can't possibly do any worse. Uh, and the quarterback situation. You don't know, like seeing a brother get a shot. Boy, let's just be honest here. Blake Simmons ain't good. Blake, Blake Sims ain't good enough to win a championship. Because let's be honest here. Why he needs oh, to lose, lose, hey, lose a little bit of that gut there. But also, the thing is, numbers lie sometimes. He can't throw the ball downfield. And uh, and I believe he got the teams like Florida, the LSUs, is going to sit there and pounce on that 5- and 10-yard pass. If he can't throw the ball downfield, he's kind of screwed. I feel you. So who do you root for in the NFL, man? <sighs> believe it or not, the Buccaneers. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 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 Yeah, I know the Buc- Okay. So what, yeah, what, what, what are we going to do this year? Some people actually have some high hopes for the Buccaneers this year. Hey, what do you think? Frank who's on do? with us. Frank who's on with us. He got you guys like su- surprising everybody. Yeah, I got you guys in the playoffs, man. It depends how Josh McCown does. It really Jimmy depends just gave on away your picks, Frank. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> just one, just but, one, just a sneak preview. <laughs> you know, this is the NFL, so it's all about the quarterback. If they, if if he plays. If he builds on last year and nah. plays well, we have a shot at making the playoffs. If we reverse to Josh McCown, who was coaching high school back football the year before, then we're screwed again. <laughs> so, so that is a story because Tampa has a lot of talent. It yeah, all they depends on the quarterback. They have a, a pretty, a really good defense. Um, I think Mike Glennon, though, even if I don't know, I, I mean, I don't believe the hype about them just totally turning it around, but I do think they're going to be better. Um, sneak peek into my picks, I don't even have them finishing last in the division. Um, but I do think uh, – I think Mike Glennon could be a pretty good quarterback. I mean, I understand why they're going with the veteran and giving him a chance to to sit, you know, because Levy Smith is coming in there to, to try to see if they can do a little something. But – I think they'll be in pretty good hands if they have to go back to the to the second year quarterback. So, um, you wanna you wanna go out on a limb and, and give us a a record for your team? Uh, I'm not going out that big of a limb. Uh, I know everybody's hyping them up, but I haven't seen you know I don't trust preseason that much. So I'm going eight and eight, nine and seven at best because I think the Falcons are gonna suck again. And I think the Panthers are going to take a step back. But they have – they lost pretty much all the good offensive talent. Come on, man. Stop talking about my Falcons, man. I'm not a Falcons fan, by the way. <laughs> but um, I watch Hard Knocks, so I'm all bought in. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm hey. team Falcons right now. All right, man. Hey, all I got – all right, man. But, hey, all I got to say is that, hey, Blue Falcon is going to have a better record than Atlanta Falcons. That's all I got to say. Um, <laughs> 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 but, but hey, man, you gotta take it easy, man. I know you got other stuff to take care of. All right, yeah, man, there, all right, homie, calls back next week after the first week, so we can talk about what happened. All right, peace. All right, easy. <laughs> Yo, Dad, before we even move forward, man, we got the homie calling all the way from California, IA. Rob, what's up, King? What's up, man? Y'all ready for some football, man? Man, you yeah. already know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, man. So, oh. By the way, man, don't be so thanks, Rocky. Yeah, don't be so bi. Why is everybody got, why is everybody gonna be bi from the East Coast, man? California, man, we got football here too. We we send the most the most quarterback to the Super Bowl come from California. Just remember that. Most most quarterbacks in the Hall of Famer from Pennsylvania. Remember that. 
No. Ask, ask Jimmy. Ask Jimmy. Where's John that way from? <laughs> I mean, I understand yeah, my, that. My I mean, I ain't got no East Coast, West Coast like beef. Man, um, I can live out East. Worst, the worst is going to be like, don't go there. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Where, where's Joe Montana <laughs> from, though? Just asking. <laughs> Just asking. Yeah. Where Dan Marino from? Ooh. It's like, no, nah, what's up, Rob? Where Montana you think we, from? I know you're a, you're, a, you're an Eagles fan out there. So what, what what's your predictions? What's what's going to be the record of the Philadelphia Eagles this season? Well, what it all depends on the defense, man. The big the big letter is D. Um, mm-hmm. The front they need to develop an identity, and it takes time. Like if you look at Pete Carroll, it takes. It took time for him to develop that defense at USC. You know, people understand it wasn't really about the quarterback in USC. It was about the quarter. They carrying turnovers so the quarterback could be in position to score. You know, the field position. So, um, if our if our front seven could get after the quarterback, it, it, I don't I don't like our defensive coordinator. But the worst of the worst to compare is eight and eight or seven and nine. But the best, if we play like, if we just, if a miracle happens, and we, <laughs> and we get nasty, and we'll, we'll probably be 11 and 5, probably even 12 and 4. Uh, I don't listen to McNabb. I love McNabb, but you, you know, you got to stop being a hater, B. You know, you don't get into some way in life being a hater, dog. I mean. Oh, are you talking about his comments about uh, Nick Foles? Yeah, it, 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 he seems a little bitter in those comments. I mean, McNabb has always been a hater. That's not new. Like, that's, that's, that's who he is. Like, he's a spoiled, he's a spoiled brat. Yeah, that's, just, that's just because he's the scum of the earth. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, but think about he's always bitter towards the the okay quarterback, not really the elite quarterback. Because he know he knows better. He's no he knows yeah. better than to open his mouth at certain cats. But I mean, he, only be, he also is talking about people cat, who want his low. McNabb ain't no great quarterback. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I, I used to say the same thing myself, but if you look at if me and Dev go back and forth, if you look at his numbers through the years, oh. it's always been neck and neck with the Fars. So Fars the the is the most overrated quarterback to ever play football. How are you neck and neck with those guys? McNabb, he's never thrown for 4,000 yards in his whole career. And he's only thrown but, for over 27 touchdowns 000, once. Well, if you give him 4,000 yard receivers, maybe he can. Come on. Well, hold on, though. Now you're talking about what 4,000 yard receivers is, did Tom Brady have before okay, Randy oh, Moss? Who, who did Tom Brady have? Yeah, Randy Moss? Yeah. He had Troy Brown. I said Brown, before them. He was a good enough receiver. Like Troy a, a Brown pick. played everything. But hold on, though. Here's my thing, though, Rob. You said Troy Brown was good? Yeah, you, you said Troy yeah. Brown. Come on, cut it out, B. Listen. Yo, boy, average 400-something yards a season. And Spygate. We can't up. forget Spygate, but, you know. He never – yo, Troy Brown averaged 400 yards a season, B. 432 That's like, to yo, be exact. But here, here's my thing, though, Rob. You can be on all that. Like, I don't even care about the stat situation. Like, you could point the stats. Yo, in that case, Matthew Stafford's like a top-10 all-time quarterback if you just want to point the stats. Like, yo, stats are for losers, man. Shout out okay, to Raheem okay. Moore. Yo, stats are for losers. I don't care about stats. All I know is – Tab is a coward, and now yeah, that people, he, you know, has his little, he has a little pulpit, he wants to talk about people like, yo, cut it out, no, baby. Even, even if you want to – Even if you want to point the stats, though, like, he doesn't have great stats. Like, he ain't the dude. Like, now, if you wanted to make – if you wanted to argue with Jimmy about Brett Favre, okay, then you can point to stats before, you know, Jimmy just totally crushes your argument, but – McNabb and stats? Where are people getting this from? <laughs> what stats? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm saying. Not, Red, I'm Favre not, led, I'm Red Favre all-time leader in, like, fumbles and exceptions. Like, yo, I ain't going to get into Brett Favre. I have a whole argument why Brett Favre is the most overrated player ever, but that's either here nor there. And McNabb's thrown for over 27 I'm, touchdowns once in his career. Not, Nick Foles did it in, like, 11 games. And he's hating on Yeah, but, I mean, to, to put that into context, just to be fair, it's like Nick Foles clearly plays in a different era of the NFL now where you can't even touch a receiver without getting the flag. So, 
I mean, all, I totally get that, offense. but at the same time, oh, they can play that. I mean, that was a – hold, but, but the Eagles and the Patriots hey, hey, hey. were a part of that rule change. Hey. If you remember the hey. NFC and AFC championship games, um, when the Panthers were just abusing Todd Stinkston and Ty Law and the oh, fellas were abusing gosh. the dudes from Indianapolis, they changed the rules that very next season. Now, they're going to be calling it like they call it in the preseason this year. Like, that's that's a whole different ball game. But yep. but they were a part of that rule change. So, I can't give him that excuse. He played, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight years after that happened with a pass-happy Andy Reid. So, I'm not giving excuses. Yo, you, right you know how many second people in the secondary McNabb made rich because of his performances in the playoffs? <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, okay, All right, look, okay, I ain't okay, talking okay, about Donald McNabb, man. Let's, let's, <laughs> Ricky Manning Jr. I'm yeah, sorry. really though. Let's not. Let's not. You know, because the Eagles season, people forget we have like six. We're playing against six playoff teams. Six. I, I would say five. I want to say six because the Cardinals. They could have got in there. They, they still had ten wins. You know, we got the Cardinals, Colts. Um, who else? We got the Packers, Panthers. Panthers shouldn't be a problem. But, but you know, we got we got those teams. And let me say this: if we can't sweep the Giants. Well, even the cow. If we can't sweep the Cowboys with that that dilapidated team, we shouldn't be on the field. I mean, that's yeah. easy to say, but yep. those are division rivals. I mean, they. I mean, Chip Kelly's pretty new, but you know, speaking in cliches, they know you best. But at the same time, like we we talk about that, these guys are professional teams too, and that's that's where the other cliche comes from. Any given Sunday, and you look at teams like the Cowboys. Like, when they're clicking, their offense is one of the best in the NFL. So you just have to be – your your offense has to be in the mode where you're going to take advantage of how bad the Cowboys' defense is because they can shoot it out with you. So I ain't going to sit here and just diss everybody. Like, we should roll yeah. over them, but they can shoot it out with you. <laughs> you saw yeah, yeah, but, uh, the Cowboys shooting we'll it out with the Broncos the last season. season. We're we'll playing for the end of the season. So the end of the season, that offense is going to be banged up. That defense is gone. I mean, they got a couple good secondary, but man, that defense is. Ugh. I hate to be them against against Chip Kelly. Um, the Giants, they learned a new offense, so hopefully we can send some blitzes to make Eli Manning look like a stoner, knock his head straight. DNA this ball. Uh, <laughs> huh? Yeah, man. Not so. No, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. Like it's, it's a long season. A lot of things can happen. A lot of things can change. But uh, early predictions for the Super Bowl. I'm actually right now. Who's going to the bowl? What you think? Uh oh, man. Uh, who's going to the bowl? Dang, I haven't thought about that. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a prediction. We ain't gonna hold you to it. Just throw it out there, man. Right now. Uh, oh, yeah. The same no money on it. it. Saints and the Patriots. All right. I mean, you know, that's cool. That's a good thing. All right, man. Well, Rob, man, thanks for your call. We'll see what happens. It's going to be a long season. You know, we'll check in with us next week so we can talk about what happened in the first week. We appreciate the support as always, man. And be safe out there, go homie. All right. And I'll be su- I'll be surprised if Derrick Rose can dunk in the, in the preseason. All right, peace. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> shot the fire and shot Derrick Rose. Rose. No reason. <laughs> that makes sense though, yo. Everybody, everybody does have their approach for no reason. It's just like it's just like a fun thing to do. Yo, but the thing yeah. is, the the crazy thing is, is how he's fallen from grace because when he first got hurt, like he was like everybody. He's like the darling of the league, and people are like, man, if he want to sit out, he can sit out if he want. It's the smartest thing in the world. He can sit out. Yeah, that's when everybody hated LeBron, so they wanted Derrick Rose to be that dude. <laughs> now he sat out, and everybody justified it. Now he's, you know, he sat out too much, and people are getting tired of that. Like, all right, dude, it's time to play. So Derrick Rose yeah, is not the think... guy anymore, man. It's a shame. <laughs> all right, it man, does... get this NFL rap, man. Absolutely, man, because Shots you know that fired. this is what we <laughs> this is what we all hype for right now is the NFL. <laughs> Still laughing like how you gonna diss Derrick Rose anyway? Uh, <laughs> the football conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean anyway, the NFL is brought to you by Stitcher Smart Radio. You can now hear our show, The War Room, on Stitcher Smart Radio. Stitcher allows you to listen to your favorite shows directly from your computer, your iPhone, your Android phone, your BlackBerry, or your Palm phone. 
If you happen to have a Blackberry or Palm phone, immediately head to the roof of your home and jump off and kill yourself. <laughs> The latest episode is always available for you. No syncing needed, no memory or storage wasted. Downloading is easy. Click on the Stitcher logo, which is right on our website, which is warroomsports.com. Download directly from that page. Make sure you enter the promo code, the warroom, T-H-E-W-A-R-R-O-O-M, for a chance to win a cash prize. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. No money team. Let's talk football, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, no, Miss Money. Uh, all right. <laughs> the, the I'm a little story. late with the joint, but here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I'm tripping. My Oye's on Broadway. My fault. Anyway, um, the first story I want to talk about is Michael Sam. That's right. Michael Sam makes news. Uh, I've never talked about a seventh-round pick this much. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> He's been cut by the Rams. And oh, signed to the you Dallas said. Cowboys. You said, Joe, practice. Just you know, you just got to say that when you're talking yeah. about Michael Sam. Just just because I brought his name up, he's been signed to the Dallas Cowboys practice squad. We know the Cowboys love to make news. What do you guys think about Michael Sam uh, going from the Rams to the Cowboys? <laughs> the Rams, come on, man. Look, um, <laughs> uh, I, I got one point, man. Have you guys ever seen? press conference held for somebody signing to a practice squad? Come on, man. <laughs> too I mean, far, I got, man. I, I, too much. I got, I, got, I got two things to say, yo. Shout out to AI. Like, we're talking about practice squads? Like, we're talking about practice squads right now. Um, but, but second, I just want to shout out, we're all Big Brother fans, I want to shout out Frankie Grande from Big Brother doing more for gay athletes than Michael Sam and Jason Collins combined so far because he actually won something in his life on, like, these guys who are just, like, do nothing and haven't even contributed to a winning team yet at all. So, shout out to Frankie. Frankie Grande. We're talking about practice. Not a game. Not a game. We're talking about practice. Practice, man. I mean, how silly is that? Yo, we are talking about practice. I mean, I I think, I mean, like Jimmy said, the, the Cowboys don't mind a little publicity, you know, no matter what form it comes in. Um, I also think, like, you know, a lot of people have mentioned already, the defense was so bad last year and their prospects of getting better this year don't really look that great. You know, Sean Lee's injured again. I think at some point he's actually going to get to suit up and play, you know, even if it's because Jerry has to make sure he's, he assigns him a number and a real jersey so he can sell some. Even if that's the reason, <laughs> he's going to suit up at some point for some reason. And and get a chance. Um, I'm figuring if the defense is looking as bad as it looked last season, and they're not winning games, then I think they're going to just go ahead and take the chance and let them play. But like I said, the publicity that's going on, like I understood the whole thing. I understand the movement, all that stuff. That's fine and well. But a press conference for somebody signing to the practice team? Like, come on, Jim. Jim, I was watching Hard Knocks, man. My, Falcon dudes ain't get no press conference when they got cut and put on the practice team. <laughs> Where's the hard knock press conference? This is absolutely true, man. I mean, Jerry Jones is the master, man. It's the reason why that organization is worth what it's worth. Jerry Green Jones uh, at Casey Max thirty eight on Twitter chimes in. Jerry Jones is a marketing genius. Michael Sam is the next best thing to Johnny Football. So you know. I agree. I co-signed that. I mean, when I saw, when I saw, I wasn't even shocked. I just started laughing, like, "Yo, it's Jerry, yo, Jerry, Jerry doing it again, man." So, shout to Jerry Jones for making the Cowboys relevant. They may not even like win a game this year, but nonetheless, we're going to talk about them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Although people have been pooping on the Cowboys, we'll get into our picks later. Let me not, let me not go there now. Let me not even well, go Jim, there. Yeah, we now. got somebody on the digital who wants to get in on that. Um. Said that Michael Sam <laughs> conversation real quick. Uh oh, uh oh, we got a call from the nation's capital. We got the homie Jonathan calling in from DC. What's up, homie? What's up, War Room? What's going already on? Know. Now we know you're a we... Redskins fan, so you get off on trash in the Cowboys. Falls. Yeah, we know you want to take a shot no, at the Cowboys. No, no, no. Go ahead today, and fire your shot. Because I think I think one of y'all already said it. Uh, not well. First of all, I'll, I'll be getting to Michael Sanders in a second. But one of y'all have already pretty much said it. Jerry Jones is a genius. And yes, you heard <laughs> that from a, a Redskins fan. This was a marketing point. 
he knows that team has on paper now is a twenty maybe a twenty five to thirty two rate defense. <laughs> They're not going nowhere this year with that defense. Right? Right. Yep. So what do you do? You go get yourself so you don't lose some of that money in a fan base. You go get a fan base that's really not an NFL fan base. You get yourself a Michael Sam fan base, kind of similar to the Tim Tebow uh, uh, fan base a few years ago, where a couple of them didn't understand the quarterback position. Some of them, let him play quarterback when he's not a real quarterback in the NFL that is. Right? But he had a fan base, and that fan base made a lot of money for the uh, Broncos at the time. Jerry Jones, in my opinion now, I think he did get it as a fan, as a thing for marketing reasons to get that fan base uh, excited so that way he can, he can make his own money that he's going to lose. from uh, Because, you know, teams are going to – I mean, by, by the, probably by the eighth game of the year when, when the Cowboys are probably going to be out of contention based on paper, on the pay, on that defense, then he won't lose too much money. And then he can throw Michael Sams in there if he chooses or whatever he want to do. And then also get new fans that didn't care for Cowboys just because he went ahead and put them on a practice squad. They made a, a, a uh, made a. Uh, That's what, what I said. They they made have to move. give them a real number. They have to give them a real jersey if if they want to sell. Right. Them. So you got to suit them up. You got to suit them up. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and what better way to market yourself as America's team than to say you signed the first day day football player? I mean, it's, it's just well, you're right. It's genius. And they're gonna say we well, actually gave him a chance to play. The Rams didn't. <laughs> right. And, and that's from a marketing standpoint, genius. So, again, being a, a Skins fan, and I know the whole hate the Cowboys and all the other stuff, it was a marketing genius move on Gerald's part. Now, the other thing. you supposed this is to the other hate on him, though, man. All this nicety, course, man. you got to take a shot before you leave. you got to take a shot. Well, let's also go to the core <laughs> of why he got cut out of the Rams. I think mm. ESPN did that, made the, the Rams have to make the decision because supposedly, uh, from my understanding, yeah, what was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> they did a report on how he takes showers. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I thought that was a little. I've heard that in all the years I've watched the Falcons fight with A5. I have never heard the, a public uh, company of that of that statue, or any company for that matter, release, have someone release, an uh, analyst, or whatever you want to call the lady, or spokesman, or whatever, release how the showering habits of an NFL team. That's ridiculous. What if, is anyone going to do anything in ESPN about it? Is the NFL going to take know. any sanctions or, or anything, or is, or is there anything they can do? Probably, probably not. But you know, it's too much money invested in, in ESPN from the NFL, so they're not going to bite that hand. But at the same time, I, I, I agree with you. It was very, it was a real unnecessary report. Like nobody really needed to right. know how nobody he showered in comparison to the other guys. Like. If he used you know what's funny or, about that story is, like, is I can only imagine how many how many people it had to go through. In, like I can only imagine how how many people it has to go through to get on the air. Like any story, so that means like more than I would say five people thought that story was a good idea. Like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, Frank. I mean, somebody had to sign off on that. <laughs> somebody right. had to yeah. off on that. Like, go ahead, run that story. That's genius. The, That's gold. I I feel bad for the kid because. This kid could potentially has what do you like uh, SEC defensive player of the year or something like that a Missouri player of the year or something yeah, I don't SEC know it was something along those lines okay he should have been a first second round pick okay because he decided it maybe it was the right thing to do or maybe it was the wrong thing it's up in the air you know for him to come out and finally say hey look I'm gay and come out publicly maybe that was shooting himself in the foot who knows but, so you already know his bias. But for them to say, well, St. Louis had, I guess they had no choice from a, from a, a a standpoint of, look, we don't want the drama no more, you know. And plus, also, let's not forget, they're dealing with the Ferguson mess down there in Missouri. So they, they didn't say, look, we don't want too much attention this way. We're just going to part ways now and let it move on. I don't know. I mean, but, uh, I mean, I, you know, that that was just a little out of hand. But, uh, but I think you're seeing something to happen. I know nothing's going to happen. But, I mean, it should have done something for the guy. I just feel sorry for the guy, you know. You know All right, well, and the other thing last, oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go oh, ahead. yeah, last thing I want to talk about was the game going on tonight. You know, uh, I, 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 don't see, uh, I don't see Seattle uh, beating the uh, Green Bay tonight. I think it was an upset. Okay. Yeah, Green, that, that, yeah, that, that we had some, well, that's a, a bold 
prediction. Only I only say that because you know they're playing at home, um, and you know the, the story everybody's making out of the fact that uh, Aaron Rodgers has to play with his backup center um, in the loudest building in America, basically. So it's going to be difficult, but I wouldn't be surprised in the least if if the Packers went in there. And Not win at the all. Game, so. Here's Last the thing, thing Johnson, Johnson in my personal you. opinion, when you have right, one of the man. top quarterbacks, um, a Drew Brees, an Aaron Rodgers, uh, Peyton Manning, and Tom Brady, even even if they're not on the best teams, they always have a chance. Always. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's a deal, man. You listen, this young kid, yeah, he's a backup, but you don't know. This kid could be, like, motivated. Like, um, my whole job is to stop you from, from hey. getting my quarterback, and now you piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> so, give it – last it's thing. Like, Okay. Give us the record for your team. Which uh, what, what's your predictions this Redskins year? this year? Yeah. Oh man. Okay, I'm gonna ignore preseason because preseason is bullshit. Sorry, yeah, first. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're gonna I see my team. I see my team, and based on because they're gonna have a weaker schedule than than some of the other teams in the NFC East. Uh, I see them going this year eight and eight. Eight and eight. Um, and that's right, well, John, I asked a question. How many weeks before Cousins is the quarterback of the uh, football team? He won't yep. be the quarterback unless RG3 is hurt. Okay. Because if, if, Cousins, if Cousins was supposed to be the quarterback of the NFC team, there's like four teams that need a quarterback right now, right, right or wrong. There's more than that, yeah. in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, five teams that really need a, a franchise quarterback or some quarterback. Somebody would be able to fourth round. So somebody would have gave a fourth round pick if he had cousins three or four months ago. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's not. Yeah, but I mean, you can argue the reason why the Redskins. We don't. We don't know. know. The Redskins didn't do that. We don't know if they want to keep cousins in case they need to replace RG three. I was about no, to say we don't know if they were offered McCormick. that or not. They may have been offered that and they may have turned that down. I think that's the same point Frank just made. No, I, they, I they, think they, you know, that's a that, possibility. That, 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 Cleveland Browns offered them a fifth round pick, and the Redskins said we want at least a fourth. And that's where they stopped talking. So I think we're willing to go with fifth. I mean, but that's you know, that's that's don't believe everything they tell you. <laughs> but no, I, both, both no, sides. I see them I mean, going eight and eight this year. Eight and eight. Okay. That's just being honest. That's okay. That's what's up. All right, man. Good thing about RG3, the is cool. and, oh, we'll we'll it off. If R D three is not productive, and I, I'm only saying it because he's still recovering from that leg injury. I don't care what anybody says. He, he still has to go through. Even though he's physically recovered, I don't think he's mentally recovered. It's My question is this, though, John. How many years does he get that excuse? Like, is it going to be three years from now? I'm be like, he hasn't recovered yet. Well, but, but where was this all this first year? When his uh-huh. first year was there, nobody was saying nothing about the kid. The kid was fine. He had the best stats ever. Oh, no, 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 no. no. I, killed, I killed him for throwing check down Charlie passes. He didn't stretch the field at all that first season. He was throwing passes behind the line of scrimmage, little two-yard hitches, like, I mean, not, not that he can't be great, because he has the ability. I mean, he may be great. All I'm saying is the jury is still out. But stop, I mean, the, the whole excuse of he's still recovering from the leg, I was just asking how long does that last? Sure. It you took said physically Tom Brady a year to finally get himself back together after his knee injury. Okay. Remember, so you he first came back from his knee injury. And I'm not saying he's Tom Brady. Don't get me wrong. Even though he has more physical sets than Tom Brady, Tom Brady still took him several months to finally get into the Tom Brady we're seeing again. So yeah, but here's the thing: there's the quarterbacks who get injured and never come back mentally, ever. Oh, I don't know, okay, though, man. That would be Tom over. Brady. <laughs> the next year, when Tom Brady got hurt, Jonathan, the next year he threw 43. He threw almost 4,400 yards, 28 touchdowns, and only 13 interceptions. So I, I don't know. He came back a little know, stronger. But he, he is Tom Brady, so he already had that. You talk about 2009 or 10? 2009 2000, or 10. 2009. He got hurt in 2008. He came back in 2009 and threw uh, for 4,400 yards. And they went they went 10 and six that season. Uh, I think they went to the playoffs. But I mean, but he, but but he. I still understand what you're saying because I mean he's Tom Brady. He already had yeah. you know a lot of experience. So he he's he the type of dude. Off. Yeah, and yeah, he can he can perform like that without an off season. We you know. Robert Griffin was yeah. basically a rookie going into his second year. He's not. He was. He's not at that level where he can't have an off season and expect to be good. But Mike Shanahan did not really. Want but him. I. But that I also understand what Jimmy's saying. How long are we going to give him that? 
We can That's give all him that I was now. asking. I'm not, I'm not saying the kid won't be great. I'm just saying I, how I, long is he got an excuse. I give him to. I give him a month, one month in itself, and I'm gonna only say that because he's learning new offense. I give him about four to six games, and if you got something great, if not, then you know what? The Redskins can still cut part ways with him a year later and then go use a first-round pick and go get himself another quarterback or keep Cousins and then go get him some help. Okay, that's all That's just being honest. That's being honest. Right, no doubt. No doubt. Call us back next week, yeah. man, so we can talk about whatever well, happened in week uh, one. Oh, okay, guys. You guys take care, all right. okay? All right, all right, right. Let me take it easy. All right. Yeah, man. You know, man, I we might as well get into man. these. We might as well get into these picks. <laughs> yeah, we definitely, we definitely are getting into the picks. The only thing I want to ask you guys is, you see the contract that JJ Watt got six years, one hundred million dollars, fifty-one point eight million guarantee. What you think about that for JJ Watt? With all due respect to JJ Watt, like, and obviously he's a great player. I don't know if any defensive player is worth a hundred million dollars. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and say, get your money, King. That's, that's all I got to say. I'm, I mean, uh huh. I saw yes, I saw I saw Hainsworth get a hundred million dollar contract and Yo playing defensive tackle. Who played the defensive tackle a hundred million dollars? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. you know you know you know Dominican Sue gonna ask for it now. J J Watt got it. Yeah, but. Dominican Sue like he gonna give half of it back to the league with penalties, but he gonna ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, also all I gotta say to J J Watt is get your money, King. They wanna give it to you, you take it. I no hear doubt. his work ethic is crazy though, so we shouldn't expect a drop off from him now that he got paid, but we'll see. I know the process. Yeah, there was a story that there, there was a story that in 4 a.m. right after he got the contract, he was in the weight room, just like <laughs> just like bulking up. Like, That's probably how that? he celebrates, though. He probably celebrates by lifting weights and lifting cars and stuff. Yeah, but, um, he don't get no moisture. No, anyway, man, I, I gotta get it. I think the prospect of looking across the line at him and J- and Jadavian Clowney is going to be scary for a lot of quarterbacks. And speaking of. Washington, you know, Robert Griffin got to stare that down. He got to be the first one to stare that down. So, God bless. But He might not make it out the first week. Um, <laughs> it, it is interesting you say that because, like, some of, some of these teams and some of these divisions, I didn't know where to go with it. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I couldn't place where the Texans would finish. I was thinking about right. their offense, their quarterback situation and all that, but then I kept thinking about, yo, on that defensive line, and you got to line up as a quarterback across from that, Sheesh! Speaking of that, man, yo, let's just get into our let's get into our season picks. You know, because uh, we have to. What you guys think? Um, let's start with the NFC East. Uh, Frank, how do you see the NFC East playing out? I can see any of the four teams winning. You can talk me to any of the four teams winning. I took the Eagles because I put an emphasis on this new rule, and I think the you know the Eagles are going to score fifty points a game if if this new rule like really comes into play, like the way the referees have been calling it. I hope you're right. Shady is my um, fantasy running back, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, by the way, um, I had the first pick of the draft and picked Shady, and everybody was shocked because everybody just assumed I would pick Manny. <laughs> but, they, don't know, they don't know you that well. Yeah, they don't know you that well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, next thing, uh, Dev, so who do you have winning this? How do you see the whole division playing out, Dev? Uh, speaking of not knowing you that well, if anybody think that, you know, this is a homer pick for me, then you don't know me that well because I can't really remember the last time I picked the Eagles to win a division. But, you know, this time, what else do you have? So I got the Eagles uh, finishing first in that division. Surprisingly, because I've heard a lot of people, you know, think that Washington was just going to be trash. I got them being second. I mean, in this division, you know, first, second, third, or fourth could end up being trash. But I got Washington uh, followed by the Cowboys and the Giants bringing up the rear. Um, I'm not really confident about any of those picks because I really think it could go either way, especially two through four. So I'm going with the Eagles in this division. This is true. And, by the way, Frank is a Giants fan because you heard – you know, hit him with a little damn right there, cause um, you know, but it, <laughs> no like I was telling Frank, I was telling Frank this on um Field Vision. The Giants are a team that may go three and thirteen, they may go thirteen and three, they may go eight and eight, go in the playoffs and win the bowl. I yeah. hate predicting anything about the Giants, cause you just never yeah. know. It's hard. That's but um, being a Giants fan, it really is just like you, you can't. You I couldn't imagine. Know I couldn't imagine that. Frank, your imagine. team Other is bipolar, that, man. <laughs> your team is tripolar. <laughs> <laughs> they tripolar. <laughs> but uh, for me though. 
I'm going to, um, you know, stick to the script and also have the Eagles. And I'm picking the Eagles like everybody else because that division isn't just it, on paper they aren't that good. I had the Redskins finishing in the basement. Um, if RG three can show and prove, they they you know possibly not. But if he continues to play the he the way he's been playing, I don't know about and, that. But um, and that's what but I, Jim, that's what my thing is. It's like I I the possibilities of that offense, and it all comes down to him. He he doesn't have an excuse about not having weapons. So if he can play well. That offense is going to do some damage, and the defense is, Absolutely. you know, improving. So, I, you know, they got and some also, good pass I want to rushes over how, there. How they, Kerrigan how they, and Rackle. Out of this, what bothers me about like a lot of these young quarterbacks now is like everyone is expected to jump in and be Drew Brees. Like, what happened right. to just managing a, managing a game? That's why the yeah. one thing I respect about Russell Wilson is he knows his role and he sticks to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you see Kaepernick and some of the other quarterbacks, sometimes they get out of pocket and try to do too much. Russell Wilson, like, them, yo, man. Russell Wilson, it, like, yo, I got a defense, I got a running game, I'm going to sit here and throw these little check downs, and I'm going to chill. Yo, when the Super Bowl <laughs> was at its point where you're saying, okay, this is over, Russell Wilson had, like, 20 yards passing. They padded his Shit. stats so he wouldn't look like he had a bad Super Bowl because, of the, you know, the defense played so well. So he ended Something up with, like, to be 200 sad. yards and – and two touchdowns, but do have like twenty yards when the game was over. <laughs> There's something to be said for managing a game, like in the know your role and don't try to do too much. You know what I mean? Like some guys fall for the headlines, but you know that's why you got a chip and they don't. Now, let's move to the next division. Let's go to the NFC North. Yeah, let's start with you this time. How do you see the NFC North playing out? Surprise, surprise. I'm usually pessimistic about this team when everybody talks about how good they are and they're going to finally break through and win the division, go to the playoffs, and go far. I usually say FOH. But I'm going to change gears this season. I'm going to pick the Lions to win this division. Fuck. With the Packers coming in second, Bears third, and the Vikings bringing up the rear. I think the division is going to be very, very uh, competitive. I mean, it has to be with the with the teams that are in it. But I'm going to pick the Lions. I'm not really confident about that pick, but I'm going to pick them. I'm going to be different. <laughs> wow. Shout out Frank. to Andy Flint, Sports Kings, Lions. Let's go. Um, Unless they go I, like 3-13. I, I, I got the Packers <laughs> winning. I think they're going to win uh, fairly easily. Um, I had the Bears in second. I think the Vikings are actually going to be a pretty good team. Like, I don't think they're just going to be like a walkover team. I think they're, you know, like yeah. one of those 6-10, and 5-11 and 11 teams that, you know, have a, a couple close games that they lose. Um but the big thing is I think that this whole division has no secondary. Like, the secondary for all these teams are just <laughs> it's just division. atrocious. I think it's just going to be pass, pass, pass in all these, like, all these interdivision games. It'll be fun to watch. Yeah, they said their collective secondary is trash. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to go with the uh, the Packers. I mean, Aaron Rodgers. It's just that simple. Like, people get upset when I say this. Um, and people especially, especially my fellow Broncos fans, they get upset when I say this. But I honestly think Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the NFL. When he's healthy, I think he's the best. Um, so I'm taking the Packers. He has weapons, Cobb, um, Lacey, my man Jordy, little Jordy. He has Jordy Nelson. Um, so he has a lot of weapons on the team. The secondary is suspect. I know a lot of people are making a deal about his center. But um, I've never heard anyone make a big deal about anyone's center. <laughs> Pause in my entire life of watching football, but now all of a sudden that's a problem. So uh, I have to pack. I think, it's, I think it's more important. I think they're making a big deal out of it that this dude's first game is going to be in the loudest stadium in the league, and you know the center got to make the calls and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think I think after tonight, or I think after a quarter or two, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, man. So you know we flying right through these picks, man. It's a good thing because you know how we get sometimes when we talk football. But let's go to yeah. the NFC South. I'll start us off. Have to be completely honest. This is a biased pick. Probably won't happen. <laughs> but I'm picking the Falcons to win the division, and it's strictly from me watching Hard Knock fall into the story. Um, Soft side. You know, <laughs> okay. yeah, so HBO got to me. So I'm, I'm picking with my heart and not my head, but I'm taking the Atlanta Falcons. Julio Jones is healthy. If he can stay healthy with Roddy White. <laughs> Matt Ryan has the weapons. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. But I have the Saints coming in second. But I think it'll be one of those things. Even if the Falcons win or they don't win, I think it'll be like a, you know, um, eleven and five, ten and six. Both teams finish tied with the same record, 
and it's all about who has like you know the head to head matchup of the division. Yeah, tiebreaker will determine this division. So the Falcons and Saints. Um, actually, the Bucks in last place. I know uh, Frank is um, high on them, but I the Panthers finishing third. So that's how I see the NFC South. Frank, how do you see it? Um, I have the Saints winning. Um, I think they're gonna. I think offense is just going to be a huge thing this season with, you know, with these new rules. I might be putting way too much emphasis on these new rules, but I just think offense is just going to be a much more <laughs> yeah, of an emphasis. Um, I got, I got start, the Bucks man, in second place. Any flags. Frank going to be soft. <laughs> I, I got the Bucks in second place, Falcons in third, and I got the Panthers just free-falling this season and going like 5-11, and 4-12, and 12, something really bad. Wow. Right. Deb, how you see it? I see it. Um, I see the Saints running away with this division. Um, the Falcons coming in second, but, you know, like, not enough to make a playoff run. Uh, I, I do see the Bucks, uh not finishing last. I have the Panthers regressing from, what did they go, 12-4 and four last season to bringing up yep. the rear again in this division. But, you know, back to their normal spot. Um, I mean, we'll see how that goes, though. I mean, everybody has players, everybody has pride, but I, I, I see the Panthers regressing big time, just like Frank does, so. Saints. Easily. Wow. Okay. Well, let's go to the last division in the NFC, the division of the team that's playing tonight in our Super Bowl champions, the Seattle Seahawks, or as Dev called them last year, the Sea Chicken. Um, <laughs> you know, I, you know, I pushed that Kool-Aid away, threw it on the floor, broke the glass, and I was wrong. I did not buy in on the Seahawks <laughs> last season. And and everybody who was taking that sexy popular pick ended up being right. I'm gonna go with the Seahawks winning this division. Um, I have the 49ers down on my sheet. I already, you know, we did field vision yesterday, and I had the 49ers in second. I'm not too confident about that pick, um, even though, like I told you guys before, I'm not as high. I think the Cardinals are a good team, and I think they could be like, you know. They could be kind of bipolar. They could be a great team one week and then a terrible team the next. Um, but we'll see how it plays out this season. So I have the Cardinals third and the Rams fourth. It probably would have been the same even if Bradford was there. But I think it's a really competitive division. And even without Sam Bradford, I think the Rams are going to be a really, really competitive team, kind of like Frank said about Minnesota. You know, they may go 6-10, and 10, but they're going to be a very hard six-win team to beat. And they might drop some, some games. You're the best six win team around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, damn, that was a hard game against them bones. But yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll go before you, Frank. Pause. I have the Sea Chickens tough, or Seahawks. Tough bones. They, they, they deserve to be called the Seahawks. Now the Seahawks win in the division. Um, I, as much as I would love to pick the Niners because of the talent on that team, they seem to be imploding. They're losing I don't know talent. What, though. It's like everything that happens week to week is like the team just gets in too much trouble. There's too much going on. But uh, so I have the Seahawks. What is Harbaugh doing over there? No discipline? Can't win with him. Yeah, I think maybe like his whole thing is running out. Like, you know, no matter how good a coach you are, at some point, you know, your your word and your message just doesn't like, you know, carry anymore. People don't care. But anyway. So you think his window might be closing? His window might yeah, be Yeah, I got the Cardinals being a surprise team in this division now. I don't have enough gonads to pick them to go to the playoffs. Because, um, like <laughs> I said, on Phil Vision, which you can find on TV dot com, they're the Cardinals. If this team was named something else, I'd probably pick them to go to the playoffs. But there's certain teams in certain sports, a la the Kansas City Royals, the Cardinals, um, and let's go to basketball, you can take the Kings. There's certain teams, I don't care how much talent you got, like I just can't pick it. So I think the Seahawks will win this division. Um, and I think the Rams, who had an opportunity, I think that's going to hurt them with uh, missing their quarterback. Not as much as most, but I think it still is going to be a very competitive division. And I'm looking forward to this division and see how it plays out. Frank, how do you see it? I'll keep it brief. I, I agree with everything Jimmy said. I got it the same way, same reasons, <laughs> everything. Yeah, I'll just cool. do my whole playoffs if you want to do it that way. <laughs> Uh, cool. But hold on though. Let's uh let's let's jump to the AFC before we get into the playoffs. Um, you okay. want you want to you want to do the playoffs in the NFC now? or You want to do all the playoffs at the end? Well, no, we can wait to the end. I, we can I can do the wild cards at least uh, since we. All right, know, give me a wild card from the NFC. Um, from the NFC, I got the Packers and the 49ers. So even though I think the Lions are going to win that NFC North, I still think the Packers are going to go farther than they they will. So. 
I got the Packers in the wild card with the 49ers. I have the Saints. I have the Saints and the Lions being my wild card team. Frank, who's your wild have, card team? In the I, I have the Bears, and then I got the Buccaneers in the playoffs. I, I really like this team. Lovey Smith. They got they got potential defensive player of the year at each position on on defense. They got one on the line in McCoy. They got one in the linebacker court in David, and then they got Werner. I mean, all very good players at you know at each depth chart. So I mean. I really like this Bucks team. Lovey Smith, he, he goes nine and seven. That's what he does. Nine and seven, ten and six. You know, and they they make the playoffs. That's what Lovey Smith does. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about it. playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? <laughs> Let's start out with the easiest prediction to make in all of football. Um, Frank, I'm going to start with you. Who is going to win the AFC East? AFC East comes down to this for me. Tom Brady, Ryan Tannehill, E.J. Manuel, and Geno Smith. Who are you taking? Tom Brady. Pat. Patriots. Pat. Already. Skip. Pat. Yeah. Move on. Here's my, here's my question. Since that division <laughs> is so easy, Frank, who do you have finishing second in that division? Uh, I mean, if you put a gun in my I'd probably say the Dolphins, but I'm not confident okay. in it. Okay, because that, that's I, who I, I got. The I have Jets. Pat Patriots winning with the Dolphins finishing second. I have Pats, Jets, Dolphins, Bills. Jets mainly because of the defense. You know, hopefully, you know, Geno Smith has made some improvements. But, you know, of course, it's not really cliche. Everything is going to come down to him. We know what the defense is bringing, but we also know, uh, you know, what the what the Patriots as a whole are bringing. So, Patriots. <laughs> How That's soon before it. Michael Vick gets in? <laughs> 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 Uh, you know what? I don't know if he does. I think he might because I think, you know, as much as we think this is nothing in a runaway, I think Rex Ryan thinks he has a really great team over there. So if it looks like it's yeah, going to fall right early, I don't think his leash is going to be that long because Rex Ryan has confidence that this is a good team. You know, if he if he yeah. has to go too long, then but I, I don't think he will. It's true. This is absolutely true. Let's jump to the next division. Let's talk about the AFC North. I'll yeah. start. I got the I got the Bungles winning this division again, uh, followed by the Ravens, the Steelers, and the Browns. I think the Steelers will be a little improved from last season. I don't know how much of that is going to show up on the standings, but <laughs> uh, Bengals, Ravens, Steelers, and <laughs> Johnny Manziel. Okay. Now, now for me, right? I had play. the Ravens. He's going to get into. I had the Ravens winning this division. Um, the Bengals are another one of those teams. They're still the Bengals to me, but uh, they do have the talent. You know, they got Giovanni Bernard. Bernard. But uh, at the end of the day, <laughs> I like the players the Ravens have. They're, they have some young linebackers on defense that mm. have impressed me. So I want to go with the Ravens, man. They can come get Ray Lewis to give 31 minute speeches before every game. They possibly can win a lot of games. So I'm going to go with the Ravens. He's got that sitting outside the stadium now, so it's a little motivation even when he's not in the locker room. He's always <laughs> going to be there, as Ray says. But uh, I have the Browns uh, finishing in last. Now, in terms of second and third, uh, that can go either way. I'll say the Bengals possibly second, Steelers third, and the uh, Browns finishing up in the rear. Frank, how do you see this division? So I got a curveball. I, I got the Steelers winning the division. Um, you got Big Ben in the contract here. I don't think you can ever underestimate that. Um, I think the defense, I mean, that's still a defense, still has ties, still Dick LeBeau. Um, that rookie they drafted at Ohio State looks really good. I, I really oh. like their draft overall. I think Dre, uh, Dre Archer or Dre Archer, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Dre. I think he's going to be a different maker. Yeah, I think it's Dre, too. I, I, you know, very Darren Sproles-like, and I think they'll utilize him that way. And uh, I, I like the Steelers team. I think I think it's going to be a close division. I think it's going to be one of those 10-6, and six, and then, the, you know, the second-place team's 9-7, something like that. But I got the Steelers. Yeah. Does Jim McCarthy have a gun to your head? <laughs> Jim McCarthy does not have a gun to my head. You know, there's just no. Uh, I don't need being used. There's no taking three going on yet. Got you. Got you. All right. Well, let's do this one here. Let's go to the South, the AFC South. Um, I have the Colts winning this division. Uh, the rest of the division, uh, I'm not too sure about. Here was one of my upset picks. I have the Titans finishing in second. Um, I understand they have quarterback issues, but I like the Tennessee Titans. I like the team over there. Um, the Texans, I don't know what to make of them. They could possibly win this division. They could possibly come in last. Who knows? Um, 
But I have them finishing third in the Jags. I have finishing in last place. Frank, how do you see the AFC South? It's funny that you brought that up to me because a part of me really wanted to take the Titans to just win this division outright, but then I realized that Jay Clark would probably have to start at least 12 of those 16 games, and I realized that was very unlikely hmm. to happen, so I went with the Colts. <laughs> but I also have the Titans finish in second. Jake, a.k.a. Hurt Locker. But, uh, <laughs> Jake, <laughs> Jake Hurt Locker, yeah. Jake Hurt yeah, Locker, Dev, how do you? I have a big bounce back year for the uh, the Houston Texans, but with that being said, they're going to come in second to the Colts. Uh, then the Jags I have in third with the Titans bringing up the rear. Not that confident in that, but, you know, the, the Jags, at least on paper, have improved a little bit. You're still not sure about the quarterback situation. What I am sure about is Blake Bortles will be the starting quarterback at some point during this season. Uh, maybe when it's over mathematically, maybe before that. Um, the Texans, like I said, I think a big bounce back year is coming, but I don't think they're going to bounce back enough to win the division or even make the playoffs. But that's a very, very talented team to have dropped the ball the way they did last season. And I can't see them being that bad, even with Fitzpatrick under center. Um, but I got the Colts winning this division. Sean said he was rigging for Wiggins. Or a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the way Shaw played last year, like, I don't know. You get that number one pick, you need a quarterback. But I don't know if they thought their guy was out there. They should have took yeah, Bortles. This is true. <laughs> this, is, this is true. Let's go to the AFC West. Dev, I'll let you start that out, the AFC West. I'm going to go with your boys, the Broncos, followed by the Chiefs, Chargers, then the Silver and Black. I also have the Broncos. I think the Chiefs are going to just take a dive. Same way the Panthers. I think they're going to be the Panthers of the AFC. They're going to take a big dive. But uh, I got the Broncos, and I got the Chargers in second, Raiders in third. Chiefs last. Damn, all the way to last? Now, <laughs> I, 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 I get your logic, right? Um, here's the thing. It's difficult, right, the fact that my team hasn't won a championship because we put together a really good team over the last couple of years. And right now we are not taking advantage of the team we put together. But – I have us finishing first in the division again. I have the Chargers finishing second. The Chiefs dropping the third, and I mean that team in silver and black is just putrid. Like, I I can't I can't pick them to go any. You know I I can't pick the Chiefs to finish below them. I do think the Chiefs may take a step backwards because now they don't have that cupcake schedule they had last year. Coming into right. last year, remember they played a last place schedule, and you know they got better on paper as well as got a new coach. So. You know, it was like a perfect storm for them to do better, but now they have to play a tougher schedule. I still think they'll be competitive, um, and I think they may, you know, make a run towards the, the wild card, but I think they'll finish in third, and I think the Chargers will finish in second. Now, uh, Frank, <laughs> Frank, I want to start with you. Um, how do you see the wild card uh, finishing in the AFC? Um, I have the Chargers and the Bengals as my wild card team. Okay. Okay, Chargers and Bengals. Dev, how do you see it? I got the Ravens and the Chiefs. Okay. I personally have uh, – see, this is tough for me. And I was thinking about this last night. I was ready to change my mind. But um, I have the Chargers and the Bengals. <laughs> Actually, I think I did change my mind. From, I think last night I said the Steelers. But I the Chargers and the Bengals. Because that AFC, that AFC North division to me, yo, know, I think the Ravens, Steelers, or Bengals honestly could win that division. There's not too many divisions where I think there's three teams that could win. Like, let's think about this. The AFC West had the Broncos running away with it. Of course, the Patriots are running away with it. Um, the Colts really don't have any competition. Um, you look at the East, I think the Eagles will have a competition. Um, the West, it all depends upon the Niners, uh, plays out. Uh, not the North. If, if the Lions are for real, yeah. possibly three there. But that's pretty much it. Like, the, the North, AFC North. North has three teams that can really win a division. If you think about it, between us three, we picked all three. I picked the Ravens. Um, Dad picked the Bengals, picked and Bengals. Frank has picked the Steelers. So, But I want to go with the Bengals finishing second. I kind of switched up from last night. but So I have them going to the playoffs as well as the Chargers with the wild card in the AFC. Now let's go deeper into the playoffs and get some early, early season predictions. Um mm-hmm. Dev, who do you have playing in the championship game? I got in the NFC the Saints versus the Seahawks. In the AFC, 
I got the Colts and the Broncos. And in the Super Bowl, I have the Saints versus the Broncos with Jimmy's Broncos emerging as the champions after that butt whooping they took last season. Yeah, man. I have the Broncos playing the Patriots. And in the NFC, I have the Packers. Um, last night I said the Falcons. I'm just going to stick with that because I'm riding my hard knock wave. Um, <laughs> but I have the Packers and the Falcons and the Packers and Broncos meeting in a Super Bowl rematch. And I do have the Broncos winning the bowl. Frank, early prediction. I have, I have the Broncos Patriots like you did, and I have the Packers versus the Saints, and I have the same Super Bowl with the same result. Broncos versus Packers, Broncos win. Cool, cool, cool. So, I mean, that's, that's very early in the season, but those are our predictions. Gentlemen, you want to run through these awards predictions real fast? Or you want to talk more about the season? We only got about you know, eight minutes left. What do you think we should do? Well, I, we can just all name them. Yeah, I could just everybody can just do their whole list instead of you know going one at a time. We can get this over with pretty quickly. All right, Dev, go, go ahead and give your uh, your your list of your right. awards and predictions. Well, I'm gonna go uh, coach of the year. I, I don't know. I think it's just because I have the team improving to the point where they're gonna win a division. I'm gonna say Jim Caldwell. I think the team is already talented. I think he may bring them over the hump. Though I don't think he's that great of a coach. But I'm gonna go with Caldwell with some consideration to Sean Payton, of course, um, since I have them doing big things this year. Comeback player of the year, I'm going to go with Julio Jones from the Falcons. Uh, Defensive rookie of the year, I'm going to go with Ryan Shazer. Is that how you pronounce his last name? The linebacker that uh, Frank was talking about from the Steelers. He's nasty. Honorable mention to to, uh, Jadavian Clowney. Um, Offensive rookie of the year, I'm going to go with Brandon Cooks, uh, wide receiver from the Saints. He's, he's going to be the speedster. They're going to use him a lot like they used uh, uh, Darren Sproles because, like Jimmy always points out, whenever Darren Sproles leaves somewhere, that place definitely misses him. I'll give some honorable mention to Blake Bortles because he will get in and probably get a chance at this award. Defensive player of the year, I'm going to go Chalk. I'm going to go J.J. Watt, the $100 million man. Offensive player of the year, I'm going to go Megatron from the Lions. And MVP, Drew Brees with some heat from Aaron Rodgers, but I'm going to go with Drew Brees as the MVP. I hate having Those are a lot my of predictions. Picks. I'm trying to, like, change my picks now because I have some of the same picks as you, and I hate doing that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but we, hey, we don't talk about this stuff uh, until the show. So I know, I know. But here we go. Coach of the Year, I'm going Chip Kelly because I think the Eagles division stinks, but I think the Eagles will, uh, you know, make some noise, and they're going to they're gonna have a great season. I think Chip Kelly is already – one of the more famous coaches. They love Chip Kelly. Um, you know, Jim, I, I agree with that. And my reasoning would be they, they're they they're waiting to see if he can do it a second year. Like, he was exactly. all the rave last year. If he can do it again, they probably will give it to him. Um, this one, you know, is uh, everybody is going to know who I picked for comeback player of the year. You know, Team Falcons, Julio Jones, of course. <laughs> uh, defensive rookie, Julia. I'm going to go with Jadavian Clowney. It seems like the easy pick, but – Playing alongside J.J. Watt, who I have as a defensive player of the year, I think it's going to help. <laughs> so, I think it's going to help him win the defensive rookie of the year. Now, uh, offensive rookie of the year, Devonta Freeman. Listen, man, this young man is the future, yo. <laughs> There's some rookie running backs I watch play, um, and like even in college or even in the preseason, I'm like, yo, the dude Carlos Hyde and Devonta Freeman, they both are major. Like, they're very explosive, but – I got Devonta Freeman as the offensive rookie of the year. Defensive player of the year, I already said I have J.J. Watt. Um, anybody who gets $100 million and then goes to, like, train, yo, I can't say anything bad about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what could you say about a guy like that? Offensive player of the year. get that contract and then go get some yams. Like, he went and trained. Exactly. I don't want to write to Magic City. Right, offensive player of the year, <laughs> I have being Aaron Rodgers. And I have the MVP also being Aaron Rodgers. Uh, cause I think the yeah. Packers are going to have a good season. He's going to go to the bowl, and he's going to win those awards. So those are my picks. Uh, Frank. Yo, that offensive player of the year MVP thing never made sense to me. But I pick it the way yeah, I pick it because I know they always, yeah, they always have a different person. So I pick yeah, it the way I pick it. It's because you know what it is? They try to, like, uh, you know, award, like, two people. Like, it's weird the way they do that. You know what I mean? So – yeah, but if you, is, if, but you if you on offense were good enough to win the MVP of the league, how are you not the offensive player of the year? 
That's exactly <laughs> it. Unless you give a defensive person an MVP, which rarely yeah, happens. But then, unless you, but then you have to give him defensive player of the year, right? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> sure, <isn't it? laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, with that being said, as a matter of fact, the MVP should be a race, like it should be a vote between defensive and offensive player of the year. Like Those should be the only exactly. two candidates. One of them dudes. Like, that's a final win. Yeah, I agree. Uh-huh. Man, we just made it up. That's dope. Anyway, Frank. <laughs> all right. So, Coach of the Year, I got Lovey Smith. I'm all in on this Bucks team. I think if he can lead this Bucks team to the playoffs, he's definitely going to win the award. Uh, yeah. I got Comeback Player of the Year, Julio Jones. I think, obviously, that's the obvious choice for a lot of people. Defensive Rookie of the Year, I got Khalil Mack. Uh, I think he's going to be the bright spot for a Raiders team that's going to be mostly bad. He's going to have a lot of opportunity to get tackles because their defense is going to be on the field a lot. And uh, I got Offensive Rookie of the Year, Brandon Cook, uh, for all the reasons that said. Defensive Player of the Year is going to be a surprise to some people. I got Darrell Revis. I think he's going to be, you know, the Darrell Revis of old. I thought he was very good last year, but a lot of people just didn't notice because he was stuck in that whatever Tampa Bay scene that they were doing. You know, the cover two, and he's not that kind <laughs> of player. Two. And I think being mm-hmm. I think being with the Patriots and being in that spotlight, you know, with all the primetime TV and all that, and, you know, I think he's just going to get all that recognition. And I think – I honestly think he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year. Um, offensive Player of the Year, I think Shady McCoy. Uh, I think, you know, the Eagles offense is going to be so explosive and he's just going to be the main part of that. And MVP, I got Aaron Rodgers because I mean, he's Aaron Rodgers. So, so why Frank, I what you're saying is since, uh, with Darrell Revis being back, we should probably uh, queue up the y'all must have forgot sound bite <laughs> yeah. from Roy Jones once the season starts. I hope it's also, no, people no definitely doubt about forget. it. Definitely. Forgot. I just want to mention. I just want to mention one guy who I think has an opportunity to be the defensive player of the year, because um, he's going to have a lot of an opportunity. Is uh, Luke Keekley? I think Luke Keekley could uh, sneak yeah, in there good. in that division. Yeah. He's going to have a gang of tackles. So, but um, if they fall off like we think they might, then he exactly. Might be out of the I, I tell you one thing. In the course of the season, it's going to be interesting because if the Bucks have like a terrible, terrible season, we're going to give Frank hell. <laughs> um, now, if they, now on the flip side, if they uh, go crazy, then you know we're gonna be like, okay. But you know, at any rate, gentlemen, there's a uh, a lot of good games this week, so I'm just gonna yeah, throw yeah. out these games and get you guys' opinion on who's gonna win. Okay. Uh, tonight's game: Packers at Seahawks. Frank, who you got? Seahawks. Dev, who you Seahawks. got? Seahawks. Seahawks. All right, uh, another big game: Saints at Falcons. Now, remember, I said that. Uh, I think these teams will finish close, and their head-to-head matchups can be important. So how are you going to have an important game week one? But it is what it is. Uh, Saints and Falcons, Dev, who you got? Saints by 14. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> <laughs> who you got? Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to be that much of a hater. I got Saints by 13. I'm taking the Falcons. If the, Saints win this game, if the Saints win this game by 14, I'm coming back and I'm changing everything I said about the Falcons. Like, yo, you can't lose, you can't lose your home opener by 14, yo. You're supposed to compete this year. After you've been on TV the whole preseason. Yeah, you know I'm saying? You done made new fans and now you want to go do that? Anyway, um, another game which could be important at the end of the season, Bengals at Ravens. Frank, who you got? Um, I'm going to take the Ravens at home. I think I'll pull All right, Dev, who you got? I'm going to go Bengals, but I'm not really confident about that. <laughs> On the road. Mm, okay, cool. Probably because Col- of the Ray Rice factor. The Ray Rice factor. He's gone for two weeks. so. Got you. Even though Colts he don't get Broncos, the ball anymore I'm, anyway. But. <laughs> I'm taking the Broncos over the Colts. Def, who you got? Uh, I'm going to take the Broncos at home. Okay, Frank. Broncos. They're gonna All right, last one. Point. Last one. We got Phillip Rivers and the Chargers um, playing at the Cardinals. Jeff, who you got? I'm going to take the Cardinals at home. All right. Frank? I, I think this is quietly going to be one of the best games of, of the entire week. I got yeah, uh, Me too. I'm going to take me the too. Cardinals. Absolutely. I'm also going to take least, the Cardinals because they're playing at home. I got at least Listen 46 this, points being scored in that game. It's at something least. interesting, right? We're, we're in all of us in fantasy leagues. We're in different leagues. I don't ask you one guy a question. Did Antonio Gates get drafted in your league? Nope. I, I don't think he did this year. Actually, I need to go check that. Ladarius Green. Yo, I'm gonna go pick league, him up. My tight he, he hasn't been drafted in any mm-hmm. league that I've seen, and I find it interesting how far he's fell off from being like the number one tight end to not even being drafted. He went from top You're ten to not mentioned at all. Not mentioned at all. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all the time, man. Can't beat him. Anyway, man, listen. Thanks everyone for joining us in the war room. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, Facebook, Twitter, all the calls who chimed in. A holler at a special thanks to Frank. 
for joining us for our kickoff special. We appreciate it, homie. Tune in next week, Absolutely. same time, same place, live right here or on demand on the WRS Podcast Network. That's WRSPN.com. We have all kinds of great stuff over there. Check it out. Uh, next week, we'll recap the uh, NFL Week 1. Look forward to Week 2. So until then, enjoy your week. Catch us here, like we said. And remember, Facebook and Twitter is at War Room Sports, WarRoomSportsTV.com for our video content. And all of our network shows are on WRSPN.com. That's how you do it. No money, team. Until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity and be steadfast in the war against ignorance. We'll see you chumps on top. Football time. The blueprint, yo. Every Thursday, 6 to 8, they do this. Shout out to Dez, PJ, Be Austin, Doc Bay on replay. Uh, WarRoomSports.com. Get that mobile app. It's not down. Call it 323. Looking double 012. They be going and you sensitive, then oh well. Yeah. Physical podcast, the tough push. Uh, Showtime like magic in the block push. Magic looking alive, push one to join in. Rip your team or listen for your enjoyment. Hip hop dollars, pit stop and knowledge. Uh, Should be in sports credits, I ain't talking college. Five guys, no beef though. Fortress secrets, but the streets know. Bellafani, I got a chief flow. Uh, KC, royalty, I'm in beast mode. Two hours. Get your game up, uh, who's the best in sports cast, you better name us, War Room Sports, yeah, you know, Jimmy, Dan, DJ, Jack Bang, Lee Austin, uh-huh, I'm Jack, I'll be coming on the beat. War Room Sports, www.warroomsports.com. What? Ain't no more to it.